Yeah, well, so welcome to podcast 14 in progress right now. <laughs> we'll get right back to that topic. Um, I want to, first of all, I want to say something um, right off the bat. I'm so sorry for anyone who I really don't know what happened. Um, I emailed the Blueberry people. That's the ho host for the podcast. They're fa First of all, let me just say, they're fantastic. They're amazing. I don't know if it was an upload issue or there was like a something the file was fine they said it was fine and i don't and so i deleted it they said if anything like that happens it could have been interruption of the upload so for some reason the file just wasn't up so i think it didn't go up to like tuesday maybe doogie right the podcast last yeah week? i think so yeah it, it was so. it was so, yeah, on, 100 on the youtube but uh apparently okay. you had you had made the you had made everything and it, it wasn't just it was not showing the link or on the right, actual the bot, yeah, the, yeah. The, the player the yeah, yeah so that so it's actually i don't it's not like i do anything i just click like on the post thing i click <laughs> um you know add this thing and that's it yeah, yeah. it's, it's the just easiest like a thing in the world. So i just i should have checked which i normally do check and for whatever reason i didn't check so it's 100 on me so i'm sorry about that but we got it up on tuesday so it worked out okay um i was nervous that i was like oh god did the file get broken or something but no 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 it was nothing <laughs> it was just a the elves the little keebler elves came in and ran off with the, the with the mp3 so yes so uh welcome to number 14 with green dude very graciously joining us from the distant and foreign and uh tropical apparently uh lands of taiwan so yes hello green dude <laughs> hey thanks for having me yay so um if you could uh but anyway introduce yourself I, 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 oh oh yes uh yeah so i've been playing poe since uh 2012 and uh, I used to do a bit of racing, did a lot of PvP. Now I mostly do D2 stuff, but I still play PoE, of course. And um, I'm that guy that uh, you can hear Moore's ranting about in one of his videos. <laughs> you know, I don't think I ever made a. I don't think I ever um, uploaded that to YouTube or whatever. Hmm. And oh, really? I don't know. I don't it know if it's be. saved somewhere. I hope it is. You know, for posterity. Um, because there's a couple of my rants that I was like, oh, I should have saved that or something, but I never did. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so you can hear, you can you can find a rant of me after dying in a race and in a particularly bad moment, I flip out and say, <laughs> like, um, what, do I, what do I say? Thanks, green dude. I don't know. So green fucking dude. Green fucking dude. Yeah, so Havoc's channel turned it into a meme, as I recall. So, yeah. Um, no, I mean, the funny part about the whole thing, and, and, and Green Dude and I definitely, we hashed it out at one point, and, and in fairness to Green Dude, you know, I was kind of just being an asshole a little bit, but I was, I, at the time, I was really pissed, um, and we were on this topic, so I think it's fine to go back to it. Uh, I, you know, if you were to say to me, does racing or PvP deserve to have the spotlight focused on them, my response would be no. But then if you were to say to me, so you have to pick one, well, I would pick racing. Now, uh, maybe that's self that's selfish, you know, I don't know. I don't, I did, you know, I, I didn't really participate. I, although I did participate in PvP and I actually enjoyed it. I made a arc um, something. I got wrecked most of the time, hmm. but it was actually a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, anyway, it's just, it's funny though, hindsight always being twenty twenty. we could sort of go back and examine the whole thing. And for me, the depressing part is I wish that they never did it, not because PvP doesn't deserve some love or some attention from GGG as we were sort of talking about. I'm sort of upset because I thought that was the harbinger for the end of special interests in PoE, sort of, mm. right? Like, I guess. I, well, I mean, I don't know what you think, Dougie. Like, what do you well, like? I, what do you think I, about? This I thing? always, I, I'm always very cautious, especially when it's something that is that you have invested interest in, i.e., racing. Yeah. Uh, because when you say right. that. We, when looking at where the game is right now, one could say, well, 90% of the, maybe 80 or 90% of the community would say that about racing. Oh, absolutely. Right? Oh, yeah. So I think, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's a dangerous place to, 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 to step with, with stuff like that because it can easily get turned around on, on your little, little interest. But I don't know. I think, I think it was, uh, I think, that it was worth a try, especially seeing as how how big of a deal it was in a game like Diablo 2. Like it really was the end game of Diablo 2. 
And so not trying that out in PoE, I think, would have been just as much of a mistake. I don't think that, on a personal note, I think the way they handled the PvP and, and the implementation of it was not really on point. It, it was definitely out of their comfort zone, it seemed. And so I think that was, that was unfortunate, but I think they, they, yeah. they like, there was, there was some good effort going on, so. Well, so do we want, do we want Green Dude to quickly explain, um, sort of, or, you know, it doesn't have to be quick, it could be as long as Green Dude wants to yeah. take, but like, talk about like, you know, he, how he, because I mean, is it, would it be unfair Green Dude for me to say that you're the Genesis or the engine driving the entire thing? Am I giving you too much credit or not enough credit or what for <laughs> getting PvP going in PoE? I would have said I, I would have given you like half of the credit at least. So yourself. for starting PvP, definitely not. I entered and there was a tiny amount of people, and okay. they're actually what got me interested. Is I I found out that there's a few people that do PvP in the Perma leagues, and uh, I used to LLD a lot on D2. I still, in fact, I still have my LLD around Battle.net. The, okay. like the level 15 charge pally with uh, all the best gear possible and mm. i love that and so i tried it in poe and i loved it thanks to those guys so right uh, but i think what you could say though is that um it uh, ggg's involvement happened because of me because what happened is when i saw that pvp was so much fun but that there was nothing happening i thought man what if we can try to do it ourselves try to just organize uh, just set up a website organize a tournament, just get people to have like a place that can kind of uh, tally up the scores and, and give people information and all that to make it not official, but, you know, just a little more legit in some way. And then that caught um, Chris's attention. And he, so he asked, um, I think it was Hedgy or whatever to, to get my contact information. He added me on Skype. And then um, from there, he said, would you be interested in flying down to New Zealand and, helping us because we have this one month gap where we don't have anything planned where um, like the people are working on the future content, like the artists, people are all working on that big expansion, which was, uh, I guess, this, um, all the labyrinth stuff, right? The ascendancy stuff, I guess, but um, was that right? I remember, for, was that pre to was it? So it was mm -hmm. the one patch before 2.0 was like 1.3 or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so all yeah. the artists are like working on the, far away stuff and uh there was a like a programmer or two and like the unique guy um uh what's his name nick yeah the, who does the uniques so those guys they didn't necessarily have anything specific to work on right now and so they thought well you know green dude's doing this pvp thing it's gaining some attention but willie and i were actually doing uh pvp tournaments and streaming them and they were getting actually hundreds of viewers and like people definitely enjoyed watching at least so that's when he invited me to fly down. I went there and we worked on it for a week. And then uh, you guys know the rest. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I realized we haven't talked in a while. When Green Dude came back from this, he and I had a nice little off stream chat. And, you know, for any GGG employee that's watching, Green Dude would not violate confidences there. Hmm. But he told me that there were two. One was there was a really cool system coming, which I'm assuming was Ascendancies. You know, I don't know if I ever confirmed that that's what you were talking about. Um, and then Green Dude also said that um, the stuff they have set up would blow your mind if you heard what they were doing to deal with all the cheaters um, in PoE. So I think that was right around the time when all the anti-cheating stuff eventually came out. After that, he 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 had went he had gone yeah, before. Yeah. So it was you know it's pretty cool to see that you know as as annoyed as someone like I was about cheating and racing, and that's a sort of meme something that's never going to die but um working on it for a while very clearly you know it didn't happen as fast as i would have wanted but it still happened yeah. so um yeah so, so that's so that's pretty cool um what would you say green dude is your like um your one thing you really liked from from sort of doing the pvp setup with them versus the one thing you really hated that came out of it you know if you had to pick one of even even if that's tough just something I'm just curious. At this point, with with retro, you know, the ability to look back, right? Two years at this point, I guess. Well, uh, for me personally, it was it was huge because I got to actually travel to New Zealand. But right. uh, if you're if you're asking me purely about like for PDC, no, that's, that's a, no, that's cool. That's a good that's a good one uh, too. You know what I mean? Like getting a, a yeah, yeah, behind the, the curtain. Stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, think about it. All this stuff that we have now. So like all of um, Act Four 
you know, Malachi, the, the belly of the beast, all that stuff. That stuff, I got to got to see it being made, you know, like I, I went there and they were showing me this and they're basically like, look at this awesome stuff. Oh, and you can't tell anybody. So it was, it was really <laughs> difficult, um, but it was a great experience. But the one thing, I, I guess, if I had to pick one thing that I, I think it sucks is just that people will now have a tainted experience of PvP yeah. and like they, it's just become a meme. And that really makes me sad because PvP and PoE, even even if it's never going to be a thing, it is fun, and it was a big part of D2. It would it would have been like Nuki said, it would have been stupid not to try, and it didn't it didn't work out. And you know what? I'm I'm still happy we tried. So do you think do you think there's anything they could do like looking forward to either revive it well, or anything that they could do? Not in the not that they would have to like drop everything, but like let's say like the the smallest thing they could do that would have the big in, biggest impact if there's anything you could like find yeah so well other, obviously other than the fixing the community meme aspect that that'll never be fixed but uh in terms of actually like spending resources and time and money in, in pvp or actually even racing is uh, i told you this before they need to make a spectator mode that players can use mm -hmm. because once you introduce a way for people to spectate each other they can run their own events and mm. we can do our own PvP. We can, like Project PT was actually kind of trying to, yeah. uh, to bring that back. I, you know, unfortunately, he was also a victim of some memes, but like he was trying to, <laughs> try, trying to bring it back. <laughs> that's such a, can I say that's a great way? I now want to just say that all the time that someone died of, of death by <laughs> meme, basically. Death by or, meme. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's fine. Um, but yeah, like if, if only it wasn't for the meme, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's too far gone now, but yeah, I, seriously, spectator mode, because not only does that benefit PvP, but it also benefits racing. We talked a little bit about this, how um, some of the racers would like to watch each other compete for, like, best Malachi times, and then mm -hmm. maybe commentate over it. Mm -hmm. But you, you can't do that. And, well, they can. They have the system already in place, but we can't do that because we don't have access to the, you know, the administrative tools required. But... I know that they have the technology in place and I just wish they would give it to us. It's, I think they're a little bit scared with letting people spectate and letting people free roam with the camera. And this is something people have been asking for a long mm. time, but I just wish they weren't so scared and they just gave it to us and just see what the community does. Uh, scared of what though? Well, for specifically like allowing the free roam of the camera, because some people were saying, oh, we want to make some cool POE like movie or trailers or things like that. They said that the game looks bad at certain angles, so they don't want to yeah. do that. Oh. Uh, the spectating, I, I don't know what they would be scared of, if, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I, I I know that's something that I still come back to, that Invitational that happened, which again, I kind of felt like the Invitational was, okay, well, it didn't work for PvP. Now we're going to give it a shot with racing, and it was handled. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it's just it's just the best time we when we're that's not how we race everyone races against their own classes but all that aside the thing would have sucked 100 percent if not for noogie doing commentary and he was so hamstrung in doing it mm -hmm. you know what i mean like he had to uh, i don't know he had to sort of tab between things and all this crazy stuff and yeah. the timing didn't, yeah. didn't match up and i mean it was, still, and it was good and it was entertaining if noogie hadn't done it i thought it would have been a it would have been terrible it ended up being okay and entertaining um and I, like yeah. I feel like if they gave something like that, if the technology exists, I've been confused because Bex told me privately, I don't know if it's private at this point, it was years ago, that this is something that they want to do for racing. So, okay, that would be great. But here we are. Now, maybe we'll be surprised and it'll come with 3.0. I sort of doubt it, but, um, you know, I... I, yeah, anyway. I think they've been hinting at yeah, it for yeah, years that it's something they want to yeah. do and they're right. working towards it, but they've just... It's never been more than that. Just a... Kind of a yeah, a desire to it do keeps, it. Yeah, I'm sure it's on a list somewhere, yeah. but it keeps getting pushed down by way more important. But things. that right. I don't. I think that makes sense though in the current in the current state of things. There isn't that much. Like I know everyone. Every time anyone talks about uh, racing, that's like a small, very very um, vocal crowd who who brings up all the issues and all the like the the I don't know. I don't want to call it broken promises or whatever. It kind of is, because they did say, oh, we really want to make racing good, and they did kind of 
on that on this one, I'll I'll, I'll call them out a little bit and say they they did actually uh, back down on their word a bit, and that that's generated kind of a a bit of animosity when when we when we talk about racing specifically. Um, so uh, racing yeah. is probably not really in 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 a state right now where they want to go forward with because they I don't I don't think they see any any upside in pushing a spectator mode right now. PvP is not popular and racing is not really that popular if we're honest about it. No, yeah, and I mean you can make you can make an argument though that uh it's not popular because they haven't been doing any race events, right? Right. Mm. Right. Yeah, I mean it's like the standard race. No, I, I, it's a, such a good point green dude. I, I you know the weird part is, I really feel like there's it, there's faults on both sides. You know, mm -hmm. like this, like this whole Malachi world record thing. I'm, sh you know, look, I ran it because people were freaking out about it. So of course, I sort of bowed to a little bit to peer pressure to do some runs. I was not interested in the least because it's not an officially sanctioned thing. You have to rely on all this other stuff, and like there's, and I know the tools exist to make it sanctioned. So I'm like, why? You know, it would be like, it'd be like I love racing around a track. And so, but somehow there's a racing authority, and so they keep our cars locked in a garage. So for me to experience it, I have to get on my fucking horse and run around the track. And it's like, why? We there's cars over there. Why don't we just wait till we can drive in our car because it's faster and more we're looking for? It. I mean, I, it's just such a weird thing. But okay, people liked it. But again, where were those people when racing was actually going on? The answer was they weren't interested. It was happening all the time. There's 48 races a day. It's not really compelling. It's sort of stupid. And so it's, there's there's fault on both sides. GGG created the system that completely burned everyone out. And I and I love racing, and at some definitely I got burned out once or twice. And it's just they weren't really making good decisions. And then on all the people who right now talk about, oh my God, where's racing? Because there hasn't been a race league for a year at this point. I don't know how long it's been. That's just because there has been zero racing, so they want some. But then once we have a weekend, those people all run for the hills and or don't participate in the weekend because like I saw the numbers or I think maybe somebody told me the numbers they were not that great for this the race weekend whenever it happened I mean some of the race choices were kind of stupid but still people it's not like people were like you know lead a starving man to water he'll drink anything no this is they were like nope that's poopy water I'm not gonna drink it so anyway um but anyway, I don't want to beat it to death. <laughs> One thing, though, I, that I was curious about, Green Dude, is like, do you think that your experience with that and then with how sort of some of this stuff went on really informed how you were going to do Path of Diablo, like right from the beginning? You're like, these are the things I want to solve. Um, with regards to issues of D2? Well, no, just like... Um, you know, because one thing I really noticed when I read over the patch notes and I read over what's going on, you seem to be very responsive towards what people address, you know, sort of address as oh, the right. problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, it seems well, like that's it, what GG used to be like. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's impossible for me to play every single build in D2. So if I right. didn't, if I didn't uh, <laughs> listen to feedback and be responsive, it would be absolutely impossible. In fact, I'd say 80 to 90% of all the patch notes are purely from community feedback. I, I think I I do very little of my own things. Like when I try to make a new skill, that, that probably comes from me, but otherwise, um, it, and yeah, like you're saying, GGG used to be like that, but I think that's because they used to be, like I'm just the one guy, so I can just hop on Reddit and just read the comments and things like that. Right. But Chris is, met, like he's a CEO and he's gotta like travel to friggin' China and like uh, talk with David Brevik and like these, He's a big shot now, you know, he's got things to do. And um, I'm sure there's other people on the staff that, you know, read Reddit and all that, but it's, um, yeah, it, and it's actually funny. I was watching this documentary on RuneScape. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. It just came up, but no. the devs were actually talking about how in the beginning they used to be, like they used to have players from the community on their friend list and just talk with them. And when they wanted game information, they would actually PM people in game say hey uh, you know a lot about this like the, the devs would have to ask the players for information because they knew so much about the game and then when it boomed when it grew they just kind of stopped and mm. i feel like we've definitely reached that point now where um there's like a gap right like you feel like there's a no man's line in between us and the community and uh, us and the staff like you don't yeah you don't think that you could have 
a more direct contact with the community, even with the larger game. I know, like, because I know I've, I'm oh. pretty sure in in. Is it World of Warcraft it's even? Just... Like they, they have, it seems to me at least that they have an even tighter. Well, I, I don't know if that's fair, but at least they, they have uh, like round table discussions with some of the more experienced people, Yeah. at least. Also my old my old GM of my WoW guild is works. I don't know if he runs a team at QA for Blizzard mm -hmm. or for maybe WoW, WoW for raid development or something. You know, he does something. Um, so I mean, I mean, Midwinter, it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I could it's just lately with all this American politics stuff going on, but it's like they Midwinter was a great guild as long as you don't count Europe and don't count Ford. <laughs> Midwinter is the best guild in the world, you know. And, and I mean, I, I and I'm making fun of it. I feel like it's okay I, since I was a member for a long time and I still have friends there. I'm just ripping on them a little bit. Still a very good guild, top fifteen, yeah, yeah. top 15, whatever something, um, but because it's American based, they Blizzard, I guess, can hire the person. So but I wonder if that's just because Blizzard is like ten times the size of PoE. So PoE's in that like Green Dude saying in like a weird no man's land where they're too big to I guess always associate with players like they used to. Because I know I used to talk to Carl almost every patch. Mm -hmm. He'd be yeah. like, Are you crashing? Or like does it what's going on with the skill and stuff like that. Now part of I mean there could be other people that talk. I know I unfortunately burned some bridges with some of the things I've said, which I regret. But, um, you know, I don't get the sense that they talk to many other people anyway. So, I mean, I, I talk a little bit with Chris sometimes here and there just because he has a lot of interest in D2. But, yeah, like I feel like I, I've gotten to the point where I feel like if I message him i'm wasting his time not because he's being rude or anything he's he's absolutely uh, awesome but i i like i feel like he's always busy and, mm -hmm. and i mean he is and i just feel like any time spent on skype talking to me is like time that he's wasting because he could be doing something way more important and right i and he's the only guy that i actually have communication with myself so i feel like i don't know I, well it's just funny how you know, like people, I think sometimes people might assume you're a diamond support, all the stuff that I, I've, I've talked to Chris twice in my life, I think, you know, like yeah, I just never, I never, and that's not just what I'm saying. Like that was your connection with mm -hmm. him. And so I think that's sort mm -hmm. of, that was like a, that was an organic thing because the company was smaller. So people, you would talk to somebody and like, so Car Carl and I got along, I, I would have said Carl and I got along really well. Maybe our personalities, you know, make sense or we like interest in the same things. I have no idea. Right. Like, well, like um, a good example is the because you and I are both in alpha, yeah. and we have no contact with anybody. Like nobody runs alpha. We don't have any kind of access to. To uh, I, I, at this point, it feels like I don't even have alpha. You know what I mean? Like we, we're not yeah. using it. We're not doing anything. They're not doing anything. In fact, if they patch something into alpha right now, we wouldn't know because they don't email us to tell us, "Hey, we got some content for you to test." We actually don't know. You just have to happen to log on to Alpha to know. Right. And that kind of thing is just like a missed opportunity. I feel like they have the Alpha set up. They have they have so many ways they can communicate. And I don't know. They just they don't do it. How does Path of Diablo work in terms of like beta or something? Do you have people that you let test before you patch? or? Yeah. Well, what I do is uh, I give the patch out to everybody um before the ladder so let's say the ladder happens on a friday i'll do yeah. my best and release the patch for single player only on wednesday or thursday this way it gets at least 24 to 48 hours of single player testing mm -hmm. and they have the patch notes at this point so they get to see exactly what i change and then test those changes and then i work around the clock to get them fixed before the ladder starts so that most of the bugs are are fixed if not all of them so right. so on that uh, whenever you release, do you have at least some people that you talk to to make sure everything you've changed gets at least a, like half a playthrough or something? Like I'm specific, here because whenever mm -hmm. something like because uh, like you're 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 in the developer shoe and you might have a few people doing Q, uh, uh, QE for you or whatever, uh, and so then Fire Claws. I don't know if you know about this, Morris. But that was that was released in the. I think it's just such a good example of of how these things like end up working out, because it was such an it was such a. I think if you if you're searching through things, uh, 
it's an easy thing it's a it's an immediate thing to acknowledge but if you aren't well then you just don't know it's happening and so fire claws was doing what 20 times as much damage or something crazy yeah. as it should yeah I, yeah. I actually am surprised that one got through because uh, it was in the patch notes and I did release the single player patch 24 mm -hmm. hours ahead of time. So maybe somebody just didn't try, but mm. um, the skill, I mean, it's not a popular skill in vanilla, which is, yeah, it yeah, yeah. In vanilla, you have to single target every single mob, but yeah, I don't know how that one got through, but it was unfortunate. And uh, I heard a lot of streamers uh, <laughs> helped spread the word. <laughs> uh, I would never do fun. that. <laughs> well, the, you know, it's so funny to me, though, as somebody, again, I, I got to try to solve this problem I have. But um, for anyone who doesn't know, I, I tried to install Path of Diablo. I played it to like level seven and I was blowing my brain up. I, I don't think it's anything to do with green, dude. It has something to do with my setup, my video card, D2 on my computer. I have no idea. So it's on my list of things to sort of conquer. But I subscribed to the Path of uh, Diablo subreddit. So I still like sort of keep up with what's going on. And it was so interesting to me is just watching from the outside how Path of Diablo. I, I mean, I saw it, of course, um, now that Twitch is, I don't know what it's called. I guess it's your friends bar or something where it lists all the people. So, you know, like I would just see, you know, Ray's, Noogie. I'm trying to think who else. I don't know. Eta, uh, P, all these just mm -hmm. Path of Diablo down the list and where it's normally says Path of Exile. So like, wow, there's really it seems like almost everybody. Is, play, is playing this right now and it was just so interesting to read it was like f four days ago green dude you had a big basically a manifesto yeah right where you talked yeah. about how it was like really cool <laughs> that this is such a huge community but that's you know that doesn't mean you know it's the same thing with yeah with the uh, poe when they're like 1.0 happens and all these people sign up and they're there's you know the 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 hamster powering the the server gets blown apart because of all the stuff going on so you know it's just sort of interesting to see how you're there's sort of the same things happening that happen in poe happening in path of diablo which i think i think that's pretty cool and i like that you one thing i really liked about reading the manifesto was um it reminded me of their early manifestos to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest it didn't right. it did not remind me of the current manifestos we get from ggg which Sometimes aren't even, yeah. it's not a manifesto. It's like, here's how you calculate the radius. Like it's like a geometry problem. It doesn't really explain why did they change area of effect. Yeah, it's less of, a, less of a philosophical yeah. approach to them, more of a mechanical approach yeah. where you can't really question it or chime in on that. Cause you can't really question how mechanics work. You can't question math. You can question whether or not it, like how it, how we should calculate things or how the equation should look but one once you explain the equation and that's the only purpose well we can't really you can't say no to an equation so yeah yeah so i mean do you think do you think um green dude that they that they could take a lesson from you or is, or am i being too am i being too harsh on on because i mean I, like i i sometimes think that people well i don't know if people think this anymore i don't hate GG, I still really love the game. And I think they're doing a great job. I mean, the games were popular than it's ever been. So even if I don't like the current version of PoE, it's, you know, I'm I'm in the minority and or whatever. Um, but like, do you think that they, they could come back a little bit on some of this stuff? Because I do think that that was one of the things that made PoE so great. And it seems to be making Path of Diablo so great is the real sort of community feedback driven sort of thing that I don't always get the sense we're getting in PO, but again, maybe I'm being unfair, right? I because I don't. Yeah. PO is so much bigger now. I don't. I don't know what you think about that. Well, first of all, I can relate to them because uh, even though POD is nothing like the scale of G, you know POE and GGG, right. um, I'm already feeling the effects of like I I used to be able I used to answer every single PM. I read everything. I, I in fact I still read everything, but. Now I don't actually answer every single PM anymore because I just don't have time. Like, uh, you know, I have work. I, I have a lot of like really high priority issues that with the servers and stuff. So now I'll read, I'll read a PM, but I think, oh, I don't have time to answer this or I've answered this like 10 times today. I don't feel like answering it again. So even though it's, uh, this is kind of like a small scale, uh, you know, like it, it still shows that it doesn't matter how, how, 
big or small it is, everybody gets the same problem where at one point the amount of players is just so much higher in proportion to your staff and things yep. get out of hand. But uh, what I will say though is that there's no excuse for there's no excuse for like not hiring someone to do this job or um, just sitting down and taking the time. So like one example is like, well, first of all, like you said, the manifestos, that's something that you, like, if you take the time to sit down, it resonates with people. And like when the ones that they used to do was really, really good. And I used to read all of them and now I actually skip them. And I just feel like that's kind of missing. But another thing that I wanted to bring up is uh, in, I guess they do this in Hearthstone, but in many other games as well. And it's that, um, for example, in Hearthstone, like I, and I know some people don't like the game, let's find it, but it doesn't matter for this example. The In Hearthstone, what they do is when they have new cards, they'll actually give one card to a streamer and then one card to another streamer or another YouTuber. And their job is to, re, you know, reveal the card and talk about the card. And it promotes all the streamers and all the YouTubers. And, uh, and then people, like, create Reddit threads where they talk about that card and they share that video and you get this this... I don't know this really cool sense of community and like and then like the streamer has like his thing promoted on their website and um and i and i see this and i go why why don't they do this with poe we have unique items which are like the equivalent of the hearthstone cards or we have new gems that come out and like sometimes you know they've done it before they've given for example ziggy d a, a you know a gem to try but why don't they do this with more people and why don't they give us uniques or do like look we're leading up to the beta or leading up to even the expansion, why don't they do like every week we have a new unique and we put it on the Reddit and like they post it themselves on Reddit and talk in the comment. Like these things, there's no excuse to not do it because it only takes a few minutes of their day, but it makes a big difference for the community. Well, uh, you have um, you have just uh, basically said something that I've been thinking about for years when it comes to POE and GGG. Um, and it's unfortunate because, you know, since my kind of, have, I have like a rinky dink stream, I mean, people, a lot of people know me, but I definitely, you know, like I always say, I'm a tier two streamer. We're like Noogie's a tier one streamer. Um, and so I still think, and I, I don't think it's necessarily a conspiracy. I think it's just something that I privately think that when the first beta came out, this was for 2.0, um, Noogie, or let's me not Noogie, uh, Ziggy's internet, uh, was down. There was like a dust storm or something going on in Australia. So his internet was out. People were expecting to watch him. Uh, obviously, as you said, Green Dude, we're part of Alpha. I copied over the content GPPK into my beta client. So I, it only took me five minutes to patch versus everyone else took an hour to patch or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, and I, I guess I told Hellman at the last minute. So like Hellman and I were the first people in the thing. So that helps the thing. And then, of course, we're... You know, Helm and I together, I would put us against any two other people in the history of POE and we would crush them. So we were the first ones ahead. We were far ahead. We were doing all the content. So that gets people into our channel. And we got to a thing that was bugged. Actually, I was having a lot of fun. I mean, I still have the broadcast saved. Um, I meant to make a highlight of it. And I just never got around to it. And I watched it the other day just being like, I won't, did I seem like I was negative or bummed? No, I was laughing i was like look at this thing and like freaking out chat's going crazy and like i don't it was like a really really good time and i feel like they did not like the, but the thing is i was definitely not like um, uh, you know like effusive in my praise like you could tell i'm having a great time and i'm clearly saying i'm having a great time but i'm not like fake having a great time like perhaps some of the other streamers in poe really? and i think because of that that's why they created this really bizarre thing where they were very restrictive in who got to stream it. And that seemed like the, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, but that, that's it, actually it, not an excuse because even in, um, even in Hearthstone, for example, just to go back to the card thing, yeah. uh, there's people in that, that are like very, uh, just to put it lightly, they have like a cancerous chat and it's like very toxic environment, but they're right. popular Hearthstone streamers. And, Blizzard will still give them a card, usually even try to make it like one of those cards that are very funny, not necessarily competitive, but very interesting and unique. And they'll right. give them a card. And all you got to do is just give them guidelines. For example, you say, um, send us the video first so we can review it and yeah. try to be positive. You don't have to lie, but you just 
no criticism or something like that. They, right. there's, so there's still no excuse. And then they could then publish the video or allow you to publish it, whatever. Yeah. But they, so well, and, and, and they said, and they did it, right? It was lifting Nerd and Ziggy D. But I mean, Noogie, you weren't contacted to do a jam or anything, right? For when that stuff was no, going on. But I was, I was kind of out, out of it. I yeah. was out of Pewee at that point. So I don't, okay. like, I don't really have anything to say there because I, I was just not really streaming and playing it. And I was kind of like on I, off. But, but I mean, still, I'm. Okay, I, uh, but I want to uh, say, remember that I con I, I contacted you to say you got to talk to Bex. Cause well, on the beta invites, I think they were they didn't yeah. handle that very well. Uh, I think okay. I think they took all that and 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 learned from it. Like the the whole how do you invite people to the beta and who gets to play? Uh, right. It's a little bit different than just hiving some of their items and and cre using the the community in a different way. On the I don't really see how where is it you see that they didn't like how people were streaming it i just because the, so the, because it was it was a little bit more i guess wild wild west and the first two days of content um in fact the only person that i actually would have called a popular streamer that streamed the first two days um i think Ray's Ray's got in maybe late in the second day yeah, so did i i, I would have said this Right, so like, so maybe so that was the maybe that was the first sort of batch of like, why aren't they at the forefront of the initial launch? Mm -hmm. I mean, the initial launch consisted of basically these Zeno. No, I don't think so. And Did he? Band of merry fucking morons. Yes, and then um, I don't remember if Matt. I don't remember. I don't remember it exactly, but let's just suffice to say it was extremely restrictive the first day or two, and then we had the same thing happen with. What was the time, you know, was it 2.6 or was it that beta? I mean, it's, it all runs together to me because there, there was these times where this happened. Like Ziggy D is pre previewing the Scion, mm -hmm. I guess. So I guess that's what this has to be. It, it was the second beta uh, because, right, because 2.0 did not have ascendancy, right? Ascendancy came 2.1, maybe. Oh. Anyway, whatever. But so Ziggy D is there streaming the game and then he ha he's like, oh, I have to go take a poop or something. And I don't know. Crip starts streaming. So anyway, I that's just my impression. My impression is they wanted to control it and make sure that the people they wanted were streaming it. So. Oh, sorry. It's important. Were you being talked? Yeah, it was an important little piece of information I had to know. Okay, that's okay. I heard talking. I wasn't sure what was going on. No, no, I'm sorry. You just got the message that fire card off. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it just feels like they, un they, it does feel like that's one thing they seem to underutilize the community. It makes no sense yeah, to me. Yeah. It's not that, it's not that I have to be picked. I'm just so surprised when it's like, so we're releasing 10 gems. Why aren't 10 streamers and YouTube cr content mm. creators picked? I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think this goes back a long way though. I think this goes back all the way to, uh, the early days of PUE. They've never really been apart from Chris coming on <laughs> Crip stream all the time. They've never really been, uh, I guess they, they were on the, the podcast as well and stuff like that. But outside of the let's have a developer come on, they haven't really been in, inclusive with uh, the community. It's my personal right. perception of it. Because no, I think that's right. they do race events. They do nothing to hype up the race event. They have an entire season. They don't really do anything to to talk about what's what happened that season who won uh like kind of reflecting on it and 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 maybe bringing some of the uh the winners out right and i just think this 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 has kind of been a thing over over a long period of time where there's so much potential of really bringing to the forefront some of the interesting people playing their game and these people have such good feedback as well on everything but they're not really they're not being inclusive in, in that sense, I feel. I don't think they've yeah. ever been, because I can't, I can't recall, uh, outside of like a post where you list all the 50 winners and that's it. Right. Well, I, I mean, I, I'd be curious to know what Green Dude thinks, but my impression is because they don't have somebody hired to do this, mm -hmm. that's why it's handled poorly. And, and of course I want to define poorly, poorly in the sense of, it's just based on sort of the individual person's um, whims like Chris is obviously a huge fan of Crip. You know, like Chris mm -hmm. would be the person with like a and you know NL Crip T-shirt, mm -hmm. 
at like a you know paladin card from Hearthstone, waiting in line to get an autograph from Crip at TwitchCon. You know, and I'm not saying this to make fun of Chris. I'm just saying like he seems like he's a huge yeah. fan of Crip. Um, not like I would be if you know I don't know George R. R. Martin or something like that. You know, whatever your personal mm-hmm. thing is, and or Gary Gygax or something like that. But it's like. Uh, so I think that's why he was so engaged with Crip stuff and the rest of it, it was just kind of like, whatever. Cause I mean, I still remember the first time I ever interacted with Chris and of course interacted implies that I, I, he, there was a back and forth. I'm just, the first time I ever saw anything about Chris or, you know, any of this other stuff. Um, I don't think I was a big supporter yet. He was randomly on Crip's channel. Um, and I think I was friendly with Crip. Crip knew who I was, but I wasn't part of the mumble crew. This is like, this is like ancient, mm-hmm ancient days ago and he's on there and there's ash some guy named ash i think was his name some fucking idiot and then cybrix as i recall and the cybrix and ash while crip is interviewing chris on his you know stream they just get into a full-blown argument like a yelling at each other <laughs> and like i don't know and chris was just like it's all right it happens or something i guess i i was I still remember being mortified the entire time. I was like, how is this happening? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, and the fact that he went back to Crip's channel like 58 times after that, I think says all needs to be said about, you know, with clearly no restrictions either. You know, it'd be one thing if it was like, I'd love to go on your channel. You can't have any stupid bimbos in your mumble like Cybrix because it's just a complete waste of time for everyone who's tuned in to hear Chris. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just, I feel like... I thought that was what Bex was going to be, but then I think Bex transitioned away. You know, I don't know. I never yeah, see her in anybody's thing, chats. Or go ahead, Green Dude. Well, just just to say about Bex, I think even though, well, first of all, she wasn't hired for that job. She kind of her her daily test kind of changed. I think is what happened. But um, right. one thing that was frustrating is like Bex really wanted to give us everything we wanted, but often she would go out seek the information and come back with just empty-handed because she herself even couldn't couldn't necessarily get the access that that we wanted you know like she couldn't always leak things or she mm. couldn't uh, get a unique for a streamer or whatever like she couldn't do she didn't have the power to do all that her her job was just answering social media for the most part i feel and so they still don't really have this one person dedicated to what i would uh, i don't know what the title would be but like it, it's more than just community manager it's kind of like, like a community relationship person i don't know what you call it but there's a term yeah. for it i'm sure well yeah i mean I, I think about when when i again i'm very fortunate to raid in some good world of warcraft guilds and they would ask us to be part of the ptr now i think that's changed over time and you know things are different but i still remember we'd all logged into this thing on one of our raid nights and so whoever was the gm or the raid leader at the time had some had a back channel to talk to somebody and we all got ported to a boss that was our boss to test for the evening or whatever, you know, and I'm sure there were other raid guilds that, you know, it's, it makes it seem like, Oh, we're great. No, I'm, I'm sure. But the, the point being though, there was something in place for top guilds to something, something now granted that's blizzard and it's a bigger company and it's a different sort of aspect, but it just feels weird to me a little bit that it just feels very haphazard slightly. And I don't know. I mean, if there was ever a time to sort of, iron this stuff out i actually really think 3.0 would be the time because the amount of hype seems to be well for a little bit was super high and it seems to have died down a little bit i think which is appropriate because mm-hmm. we're still kind of far away from 3.0 coming out you know 45 yeah. days or whatever it is so um yeah uh, you know i will say though on the on the how they have uh, respond to the community i do think they need to have credit for uh, we need to give them a little credit because when it comes to just replying their uh, their q a team uh is really on point i i don't can we i think we can agree on that in terms of oh, like, anyone who messages them yeah. will get a response at least that's oh, been my okay, impression sorry. I mean, you said QA. Well, you mean you mean customer service? Yeah. Oh, customer service. Saying. Well, Q and A, like sorry. question yeah. and answers, right? Like they, 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 you, you write them a question and they will come back and answer you. Yeah. Go ahead, Green Dude. Yeah. No, I was just saying they're the best customer service of I, I think yeah. anything I've ever experienced myself ever. Okay. 
Yeah, and I and I think that that's totally fair. I mean, like, I, and I've told the story before, and I've a couple times. I do think one of the reasons that I got the chance to join Alpha for PoE and GGG is long, thoughtful feedback. Right? Some will say I've seen Moore's write, you know, fifteen-page hmm. essay on Reddit. Well, okay, but that's you know, if you have facts and you've got here's what I feel like, and you know, here's this stuff. That's that's how you. That's how, at least a long time ago, that's how they would ask you to join, or at least part of it. Um, and so I know they pay attention. There mm. were several people, myself included, who gave feedback about Sanctuary, which is the node, which is the block node south of Templar. Now, people, maybe you know, I'm sure Redude may or may not know, but so there was a there was a jewel that came out with, um, holy shit, Beyond? No, no, no. Wait a minute. What is um? What is Chayula? What league is that? Oh, a breach. breach. Yeah, yeah. So the block jewel breach, you're sorry. talking about. It would be, yeah, yeah. So the so the there was a block jewel that every resist node gave you block at a thirty five percent value, but for some reason, and it's so interesting, you can see the evol. This is why I find this part really cool. You can see the evolution of the tree. So the sanctuary, a little history about the sanctuary node. The sanctuary node was actually two nodes at one point. At one point, there was very similar to what Sanctuary is now. And Sanctuary right now is it's um, six nodes, as I, I rec if I recall. And it's like Block and Stun. And then the South Path is Resists. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's Block. Maybe it's just 12 Resists when holding a shield. And then the top route is maybe one Block and 10 Resists. I'm not looking at it. This is all off the top yeah, of my head. Like and, then the, the, something like that. and then the final node is plus three Block, 12% to all Resists. But... The final big sort of notable is says plus 12 to all resists. The previous two, which are also eight to all resists, were not worded the same way. They said um, plus eight to elemental resistances when holding a shield. Mm -hmm. So the syntax was different, even though it accomplished the same exact thing. So when you put this jewel, which in the area would convert block, or sorry, resists um, Fire all resistance. to block. You fire or all resistances, mm -hmm. right? At a third, at thirty-five percent of its value. Mm -hmm. So a three becomes one. So if you have three resistances, you get one block. Um, those didn't work, and that makes absolutely no sense uh, to me, at least. And then I learned actually how it works, which is you know something to think about. I thought it would just total up everything and give you thirty-five percent of the value, which of course that's a rounding issue. It actually doesn't do that. If you have a, a node that's 15 and a node that's 12 and a node that's eight. So I add those together and you might get, you know, whatever it is, let's say 10 block, but they're all taken individually. So it will be five, four and two to, to get 11. You know, the, so the eight, mm -hmm. even though it gives you almost three block, it doesn't give you, that doesn't count. That just gets rounded off and dropped. Oh. So in reality, the, the Templar node and the Marauder section of the tree both give the same amount of block. Mm -hmm. So there's really no reason for Sanctuary not to work. It'd be one thing if Sanctuary was overpowered and they were like trying to do something, but it wasn't. It was just an oversight. Likely a relic of the fact that there used to be two block nodes in the Templar area. They got merged to one and they just put it together and then no one ever looked at it again because there was no mechanic that, that this mattered for. Maybe there was even two ways the tree used to be written for all resists or for resist with a shield and they just never sort of consolidated. People posted feedback was like a, a feedback thread on reddit not very many upvotes no responses from ggg no responses on any of the threads because i was paying attention to two or three threads uh, including my own to see if they responded no responses fixed for this legacy league patch i believe or maybe even the, the a patch like towards the end of breach so they 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 pay attention mm -hmm. like and I, I sometimes think they don't always get credit because in the old days they might have responded and said oh yeah we'll fix this next patch yeah, yeah, yeah. because for them at that point next patch was five days later so things have Things have changed. I mean, I, I don't want to appear like uh, we don't see that and pay attention to that. I just feel like what Green Dude's point is is that I don't know. Like it just feels like they there's like a gap there. There's something lost by not sort of honing in. I don't know. So yeah, they did do the um, what's it called the FAQs mm -hmm. recently, like three FAQs five. in a row, and uh, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, five. Wow. I, and I read all of those. Those were great. But, um, you know, that that's something it, it, like we have to give them credit when they oh, do sure. something good. But I just I just feel like, yeah, there, there's still room for improvement. Yeah. 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 On the uh, on the balance, actually, 
because now we're talking about resist and everything. So yeah. what has your experience been, Green Dude, on, uh, on like, let's say, let's look at some of the problems from uh, in POD. Right? A lot of people would look at immunities as a problem, where in PoE you don't really have immunities, except when it's damage that's a problem and you have to limit that. So what do you feel, like, how do you feel it is balancing something like, like PUD when you come from PUE? Like, has, has, has playing PUE taught you something about D2 or do you prefer the way that it's, it's actually, uh, like, how D2 has handled it from the beginning with the immunities? Yeah, I think actually going back to D2 from PUE has, uh, has made me appreciate PUE a lot and has made me understand that um, even though D2 is an awesome game and I, I still think it's one of my favorite games of all time, it has a lot of flaws that I think we, when we feel nostalgic about it, we kind of overlook the flaws. And now that I'm like working within it, I'm realizing that it has a lot of them. And um, like just to, to, to give one example, like the stamina mm -hmm. uh, bar is a complete joke. And even <laughs> I think David... David Brevik himself, the creator of D2, even said that if he could, someone asked him, if you could remake D2, would you change anything? And he said, yeah, I'd remove the stamina. Um, that's just a simple example, though. But yeah, like yeah. you're saying, the immunities, I, like I get people all the time saying, hey, why don't you remove the immunities in POD? The thing is, I think they don't know what they're asking for mm -hmm. until, like if I could just give it to them for one day just so they could see, they'd realize that it doesn't work. You would have to go back and change so many things. You can't just disable the immunities for one day and just there you go, it's fixed. Um, and there, so one thing that the reason why it works with in Poe is in Poe you can let's say you're going uh, I don't know an arc build, so you're full lightning, you're full arc, and you're going to work your character and start running other lightning things, Herald of um, Herald of Thunder, and you're going to you work towards a six link you're going to work towards gear your passive tree is massive you've got so many things to progress down that path mm -hmm. that your character can progress in a in this you know linear fashion or whatever but then when you go to poe uh, sorry d2 mm -hmm. um if i remove the immunity th there's no linear path you're going to just demolish all the mobs because you at level 20 you can already have 20 points into your main skill right yeah and the, the scaling doesn't work the gear acquisition is linear but it's it's not always mandatory you can do a lot of damage without any gear and i, ju I just feel like people don't realize that in if, if if you were to go one element in d2 mm -hmm. and just focus that element you would have a ton of points that are worthless you would you would max out your build very quickly. The the game is clearly designed for you to try and get more elements, right? To try and mm -hmm. so if you're a sork, maybe you got to go cold and lightning or fire and cold, whatever your preference. But if you were to just focus entirely on fire, you would be maxed out in no time. Right? Mm -hmm. Where would you spend your points? It's, it, it, the skill tree is just too limited. Yep. Well, as I recall, because um, I participated in the first reset which was lord of destruction which would have been uh like september 2001 um and i made a frost orb sork which can i just say like, how do we not have frost orb yet in <laughs> um but uh i just as i recall i just maxed out frost orb and that was literally it and then i think every other point went in defense because i don't think anything there was nothing they had they tweaked a bunch of stuff that people really didn't like and I feel like, did, I guess that all got fixed eventually. I don't. You would might might know more than me, Green Dude. Like, you know, in two thousand three or something for Lord of Destruction. I, that whatever that first version was bad, at least for me, because you hit ninety nine in like thirty hours or forty hours, as I recall, something like that. Because it was like basically a week. I didn't go to sleep, and I was just you know going to class and um, and playing, and was, nothing was challenging. We just blew everything up, and there you go. So. Yeah. I mean, I think they pulled back from that, right? Because it started to become hard again to hit 99. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That it just goes to show how like the game is, and I, I and I understand the player's perspective because one thing I I really try hard to is put myself in other people's shoes. 
for this right. because it's just sometimes sometimes you have a bias, but when you're like working like this, where the community feedback is so important, I always try and think, well, how would I feel if I was them? And I understand how it feels. Like you put, you just dumped like forty points into one element. You just you found like something that gives you plus one fire skills, and like you put forty points into fire, and then you get an immunity, and then oh, you just do zero damage now. And so I understand that it feels like a wall. You just hit, you just hit, you know, Great Wall of China, and you can't get past it. I, I, I you know, I get it, but the, the game is just not balanced that way. And if I were to remove immunities, what I'd have to actually do is go back, change the resist for every single monster, uh, lower the amount of pierces available on gear because right now resist pierce is highly available on certain items. Um, and even like, I can't change the formulas in D2 modding. You can actually do everything you want. And one of the things I can't do is, uh, for example, change the formulas, like, um, P like P PUE has that advantage where they can, you know, they can do anything they want. Right. So if they want a boss to have certain reduction, they can do it mm -hmm. and diminishing returns and things like that. I, I don't have access to that. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And it's actually funny because I, I was designing the Diablo Cone fight for this ladder mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure that there was no immunities. Mm -hmm. And I realized that even if I set a monster's resist to 99, which makes it so that he's not immune, um, you have such a high availability of pierce that yeah. you can bring it down to, to the point where they go from taking no damage to taking a ton of damage. Yeah. So I had to even add curse immunity to... Uh, so that you couldn't use lower resist. Hmm. Well, also for life tap, but um, I don't know. G just D2 is like, it's hard. It's hard because also I don't have all the tools I want. You know, I don't have full access to, yeah. I don't have access to the code, right? I'm just using spreadsheets and stuff like that. But, but don't you think the game is better with the immunities over like overall, maybe not in this specific instance, right? Where the person's ready to slam right. their heads into the desk, but overall, oh, like the overall health of the community, like don't you think it's better? Oh, absolutely. I think if Purity didn't have immunities, it would be a terrible, terrible game. I'd ha Like I said, I, I'd have to actually sit down and re rework a lot of the monster resist in the entire game. But uh, in terms of if I'm comparing D2 to PoE, I do think that the immunities are an outdated system, and I think PoE is the way to go. Like, in, if if I you know if I was the one making D2, I would I would not go back and do immunities the way they're done now. Hmm. But well, then so, again, I would. I wouldn't do the skill tree the same. Well, well, so, but what do you think about current PoE as somebody who, oh, I, I mean, I don't want to say what your characters were a lot, but weren't you? Didn't you play Crit Fire Trap a fair bit, like as a, yeah, as a yeah. yeah. So, like, what do you think about the because Crit Fire Trap is absolute. Sh I don't think I've ever seen someone playing it in the last year. No, Maybe someone is, fire but it's okay. Like, what do you think about current? It still has. PoE? It still like double dips on burn, so it's just just okay. True. It's not That's being streamed, true. but it's a very efficient build. Still, it's okay. it's just okay. being limited by how many traps you can throw. That's the only thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, what what do you think, Green did about current PoE? Because I actually feel like maybe immunities or something would be good in oh, some really? sense. That's interesting. We do have well, them though. I I mean just in just in the sorry, what did you say? We do have immunities though. On bosses. You mean? Um. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, you mean like the guardian bosses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, they have immunities. Yeah. Well, to to but elements, think, not to saying, not to an entire. Not to poison. Not, well, if, yeah. Chimera has. Chimera yeah, and Minotaur yeah. as well. I, I think there's two. Uh, there's two immunities, um, or there's two bosses that has an immunity to all all the different elements like fire and poison. And is there something okay. else, or is that that the only two? I don't remember, but don't there's know. definitely two for fire and two for poison. Okay. But so, what were you gonna say, Green Dude? Sorry. No, I, just, I actually thought it was interesting that you said. So you, you're saying immunities for not just the bosses, but just same as D2, right? Where mm -hmm. you can encounter a pack that's immune. Yes. At this particular point, mm -hmm. yes. Because if they can't, if they can't control, I don't know. I, I don't like. I well, we're gonna. I'm gonna repeat myself and go down the you know where I get PMs on Reddit. And I'm an <laughs> asshole, but um, you know, like I a volatile I think is stupid, but it doesn't personally affect me. I never died to it. I don't really care. Um, but I do think it's kind of a dumb mechanic, slightly at this point. 
yeah. and like that's the only real roadblock it seems like that it ex exists in the game so i don't know maybe people would be upset about this contrived thing and or i'll tell you right now if it was randomly there was a blue pack that was immune to something so a third of the time your build didn't kill it i straight up it wouldn't even matter People would just, they wouldn't even notice that mm -hmm. they didn't kill the shit on their screen, probably. They would just zoom past on their lawnmower going 400 miles an hour and mowing everything down. So, I yeah, I mean, it's a it's a, it's a a nice fantasy I have where, like, this change is going to do something. But I don't think it's going to do a goddamn thing, per personally. And I don't really know how we, I really actually don't know how we fix it. That That's the thing that scares me a little bit is I've been thinking about it a lot because I've, I've had some free time where I've been doing some stuff the uh, last two weeks. And I've just had to just sort of sit around waiting on stuff. And I've been just sort of, I don't know, thinking about POE and here and there. I really have no idea what they're going to do. Now, I mean, they're the developers, so maybe they'll come up with something. And I'm so prepared to be excited and, 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 and thrilled. But I don't know. I, kinda, I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to challenge you on a, on, on, on a few things. Because when you say, when you, say okay. you don't, you're not affected by volatile. Well, your current builds are not. Yes. But it affects what kind of builds you decide to make. Because you can't go like a 4K HP block character. Well, well you can, but if you try and make that, you're going to hate him. You're going to hate volatiles. Yeah, but I made, I made a 5,500 health. That's it. But, but did you... Scorching ray. Black. But wasn't that mainly to do breaches? Didn't you mainly do breaches on that character? No. I mean, I, it just it did whatever. I mean, I didn't. It, the highest tier I think I did was courtyard. I never went to. I never went to the guardian uh, maps. So maybe volatiles in those maps would have killed me. Mm -hmm. I mean, but the, see, that's the thing is, on a character like that, I, I yes, I did change how I play, and of course, let's just get it out of the way. Character kind of sucked. It was slow. I mean, as I've said before, if you took that character and transported it back to 2014, it's literally the greatest character in the history of the fucking world in POE. Right. And yet in 2017, it's dumpster tier. And I mean, I path of building, let me import that character. Apparently my dot was ticking for like 150 K or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't so, know. So Some the, absurd so the number. damage is I'm not there. Like, but I'm, I'm more talking about like the, the, the limit, like it's more the limits that are, that something like that introduces because it, it put that puts a, it puts a, an unnatural strain on some characters and the same immunity was sure. immunities would do the same. Some okay, builds yeah, have an easy time just killing everything because it's hybrid damage. It's it's all the damage. Like the EK guy, for instance, does poison, it does fizz, and it does all the different elements. Cold, right, right. right, right. So that would just yeah. shit on everything. And then you would you would want to make a, a pure fizz character, and literally, if if a fizz immune pack would spawn in a doorway, you would not be able to go through it unless you're cyclone. You just you right. physically your character can't actually traverse through it. You're gonna either land in the middle of it when you try, or you're just gonna get stuck. Right. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not saying that this was the like that's why I was sort of intimating mm. that it was like a pipe dream, where I th where that that would do anything and or matter. I, I still come back to I don't know how I don't know how they fix it, but I think there's clearly a problem on some level. Mm -hmm. That we can argue maybe about the the degree. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think that the world is ending and Poe is gonna you know, never be fun again or anything, those things. But I do think that there's, we're losing a little bit of mm -hmm. um, end game challenge. I think, which is weird to say because I don't go. So go ahead. Good. Cause I think what I, okay. What I'm hearing you say um, is it's, it's kind of how you interact with monsters as well. It, it's a lot of the, uh, how you interact with the game and how you need something to slow you down and stop you. And cause, cause it I is, agree. I, I agree at, with, with you on this completely. I don't think like psh, yeah. full immunities might be the way. Um, no, I don't know. Idea, yeah. But no, no, I, I, I personally agree on that. And because w when you look at D two, uh, what I see is that they have immunities as a, as a, as a challenge, as something for the players to overcome. Where in Poe, you have so right. many other avenues to go down that you don't necessarily need it on the monsters. But it yeah. does create a different play style where. You have to approach monsters in a different way all the time. No, it's never really the same way. Depending on the zone you're in, your play style changes. And depending on okay. what monsters you roll. And it, that's something I really would like to see happen in PoE again. But like I, I think of, so I mean, 
experiencing Path of Diablo, mm -hmm. watching people's streams and highlights and stuff, it, to me, it was a very clear bat like to me there was i really enjoyed the you're doing something you're doing something doing something and then you walk up to something that you shouldn't be next to and it bonks you once and you're dead and i saw several mm -hmm. like i saw several clips like that and i just feel like uh you don't ever have i mean that's the one thing i although <laughs> i don't think that um mr llama he's you know he was still when we talked to him was still relatively new to poe okay. and i think i'd be curious to sort of revisit some of the things he said now that he knows Pee maybe a little bit better. But that's the one thing I agree with him is that you feel a little bit more of an interaction mm -hmm. between your character. And the thing is Pee used to be like that and maybe was way too far to the other way. Cause I, I am not, I, uh, I am not viewing things through rose tinted glasses. 2012 Marauder was like some of the worst ARPG experience <laughs> I've ever had in my life leveling to 30. Or something you know what i mean like mm. you had to be like it's going to get better it's going to get better it's going to get better every time you ground slam and missed every mob on the screen mm. and like you couldn't do any damage so i mean i yes i definitely want the i want the goldilocks solution i just feel like we swung so far the other way i'm hoping i'm hoping that whatever goes on happens i don't i mean i'm curious what, what green dude mm -hmm. thinks that they should do not not i you know not your problems in path of diablo um i'm curious like since you were trying to solve this problem, what do you think POE could do, given your experience with POE? Uh, it's, it's, well, wait, it's wait, 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 wait. Do, mm -hmm. do you think it's a problem first? Yeah, Did oh, yeah, yeah. The game speed okay. is way too fast. I think okay. one thing that um, maybe POE can actually learn from D2 and that I've come to appreciate is uh, in Diablo 2, you don't have... I mean, sure, you have some stats that spawn randomly, um, but... One thing you don't have is you don't have volatile sort of uh, appear on any monster, and if you don't mouse over that monster, you die. There's no, there's nothing like that. Instead, you're going to die because that's what that monster does. So when you see that monster, for example, dolls, right, infamous dolls. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, if you see the dolls, you know, okay, this is volatile. I'm going to die if I do this, right? And then you panic and you slow down and you change your style. And it's not like I see the doll. I know what it is. I don't need to mouse over it to see, oh, volatile. And that's something that Pee doesn't have anymore. Now, every every zone just feels like it has a random monster type. And all the random monster type feels like they have random stats. And if you just don't mouse over it, you get punished. Yeah. And I don't want to mouse over every single monster when I'm playing an ARPG. But... So in Diablo 2, like, it, not just dolls, but there's other things. Like, I see the succubus witches, and I know, okay, these, these they, they hurt. Their projectile hits like a truck. Um, like, I can tell you everything. I can look at a monster and tell you, okay, this is what's going to happen. And there's not – that doesn't feel like it's a thing in PoE anymore. There are some monsters, like um, – I remember in Act 3 we were all scared of the – um, well, we've been scared of a lot of them. different monsters in Act Three. Uh, well, the, you know the Lularis girls. I just don't want to be inappropriate and use the term that I use. Oh, the, oh, the uh, yeah. yeah, the miscreations. So, right, the miscreations. Yeah. So, like that's an example of a monster where I used to go, "Oh my god!" Like, and there's many of those monsters. But uh, when I'm watching Poe now, like let's say I hop on and watch the uh, uh, Zizarin. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing, oh, look at that pack. That's a dangerous pack. I recognize mm -hmm. the mechanic. It's more like um, I can't see the screen because there's projectiles everywhere and he's just melting everything by just staring at them. Like, it's just not the same thing anymore. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just so, it's so weird. I, I don't know. I mean, this is the thing where I come back to, it's weird. On the one hand, we're criticizing them for where maybe not criticizing but we want them to like take our feedback and listen to us mm -hmm. and all this stuff and then on the other hand i don't want them to listen to anyone's feedback because <laughs> if they took feedback from reddit there'll be people who are being like well i really like that you know i'm not scissoran mm. i can't you know shit on a toilet playing computer for 40 hours or whatever the things they mm. say about people streamers who play too much and and they have a point Mm -hmm. Right, you know, Ziz could die on ten straight characters and still be rich enough to make any character he wants on the eleventh character. Right, and I think most streamers are. I'm, I'm probably am, and so, uh, you know, I don't want to take away from those people. But on the other hand, it just feels, 
I don't know. It, it feels it feels very unrewarding right now, just doing maps. Yeah. And, and you know, it's very interesting. One of the, the biggest changes I hated in the history of PoE that I actually I don't think there's any defense of it is when they messed with zone identity when invasion came out. Mm. They, is that still I, is I that still there with the invasion like invading they, well, monsters or I think they they toned it down quite yeah. a bit because of people like uh, you know me whoever who freaked out to the point of where they're like okay we, and the, but they still it's still normal is basically like it used to be and then um, uh, cruel is a little bit more diversity right and then mm. merciless has the most diversity I don't I I I just I really hated that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's too green to its point where it was like you knew there was identity in certain zones and certain maps were and they of course they still have yeah. some they have that somewhat, but it's just not it's not quite I don't know, it's it just it feels same. yeah, it's not the same. I don't uh, yeah. I there don't was know. definitely a zone identity where like I'm you know, entering a certain zone like, okay, I need to max out my fire res here, I need to uh be super careful about this or that and now I don't feel like yeah, I, I just feel like how can I increase my DPS because my offense is my best defense. That's just right. how I feel mm -hmm. now. Right. Yeah. But I mean, are we are we all just fucking stupid because the game's more popular? See, this this is what I, I think. This is what I sort of hate about this stuff is I don't. It's I guess it's not chicken and the egg, but how much how much of the popularity of Poe is attributable to they're they're a good developer. I don't want to take that away from them. Uh, to to great developer and amongst the things they do A++, right? And again, I'd be the and I don't I donated a fair bit of money because I believe in them and I still I don't regret that for an instant. Um but how much is also due to the fact that the people in charge of Diablo 3 in my opinion, not saying this or this is everyone's opinion, really shit the bed in terms of fulfilling what people want out of an out of an ARPG. You know, like as I've seen people defending D3 being like, well, it's a different thing. And, you know, we still really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. We show up and play for a week or two and whatever. It's like, yeah, but there were other APGs that fulfilled that niche in the first place, whatever mm -hmm. they might be. You know what I mean? I I, I think if you want to if you uh, want to look for and I think what Grand Gear Games is, is always aspiring to is to be a game of longevity, a game that will last the ages. And so if you want to take the, the, uh, the most obvious example, that's D2 versus D3, where in D2 we have all the interesting mechanics, in D3 it's all about just sheet DPS and like just infinite right. scaling HP bars. And it's pretty yeah. much what it is. Right. And so what I'm seeing is that we're getting more into a D2 place or D3 playstyle in PoE. And when you think about it, yeah. well, what has stood the test of like, stood the um, test of time? D two, D three is dying a slow right. death. I think everyone who just looks at it can see that there is a declining number of people playing. It's nobody comes back and says, "Oh, we really because of X and Y." No, most of the people come back and say, "Well, we didn't like the game because of X and Y," and they screw with it all the way winning uh, concept. So, I think I think they could learn something by kind of re-exploring what made d2 good and what could be implemented because what they're doing right now for instance is they're taking a lot of concepts from dark souls and in boss mechanics which is very interesting and i really enjoy that i think they're they're creating things that are very interesting as a player to engage with with a lot of their boss design yeah. and probably also you're talking about d3 no dark souls no, P oh. into okay, PoE. What, what are they taking? yeah so they're, they're taking oh, from into... different games okay. And I think since right, PoE right. was built on D2 in a philo uh, philosophical sense, and, and this is where the origin, I think they could, they could do well in tr trying to like kind of re-explore that and see maybe we, maybe they listen to where, where we were saying before, maybe we shouldn't listen to the player base too much because then you re remove uh, immunities, for instance, from D2. Well, they removed a lot of the the very zone specific dangers, monster specific dangers, because, oh, I really hate it when I encounter this and that. But when you look at the- well, reflect. Yeah, well, reflect, reflect. is, I, I, I don't know if I would call that a good mechanic. I think that's fine. But I mean, it's like getting, Iron Maiden in but, D2. But, but, Iron Maiden did not survive okay. D2. Sure, but I, but I still come back to the fact that where's the speed bump in the game, right? Why are we, why, you know, why is our why can our Ferraris go 400 miles an hour? Because there's where is the speed bump that's going to slow you down and force you to focus on defense or force you to whatever? Mm -hmm. I think I a lot of that comes down to just the damage output. 
Uh, yeah, once you reach okay. a certain amount of damage, you just fly through things. Like damage yeah. out, like average damage output from monsters and average damage output from you. The moment the monsters die too quickly or they don't hurt you enough, well, then they all just become a blob. Yep, exactly. Right. That's, that's really what it is now, right? It's the yeah. monsters are, yeah. they don't feel unique. The zones don't feel unique. Everything is just, it's just like you're just driving through them. And as long as you're driving fast enough, nothing can slow down this machine. And <laughs> I mean, it's sad because... It's like you were saying, PUE is growing, right? The numbers are bigger, yeah. they're getting bigger. So maybe they're doing the right thing. But then as a veteran player, I I look back and I'm thinking, this is not the same game. And for me, there's a lot of mechanics that are actually less enjoyable now. But it's weird because they're growing in, in popularity. So maybe, maybe the reality of it is that uh, what we want is more niche. Right? Yeah. Well, Possibly. but I do think I do think part of it is also there is this um, sort of desire where I, you know, I hate to be that person. You know, it's like D huh. three, in my opinion, fucking failed. So I don't know why we have to take on anything that D three does. You know what I mean? You want to come play this game? You need to come participate in our community. How we do things, how things are done. Like the biggest argument against the auction house is that it didn't work in D three. Well, who gives a fuck? That's like saying that I can't eat a banana on the moon because there's no air. That doesn't matter. We're not playing on the moon. I'm on Earth. So D3 is the moon and PoE is Earth. And so we're going to make things work over here. And I just hate these. I, I really drives me. And I'm not saying you guys are saying. I just hate these sort of arguments where it's like we have to something something because what someone else did. I, you well, know, on the if it's a good thing, they've take... stood their ground. That's one of the places where sure, they've stood they their ground. And that could be, right, I think that wrong. could be healthy. Uh, I, I, I got to disagree. No, that's what I'm saying there. They are, they are one, I'm sorry. They are 100% wrong. About they are 100% right bad. on my side. I have to like wholeheartedly okay, disagree fine. on that. But that's what I'm saying. So for me, they, so from D3, they see an auction house. They say, well, I can't ever have anything like that. And then yet they're trending towards D3's, you mm -hmm. know, sheet of how big can we make our number? Right. Whereas I would much prefer to keep the POE sort of a little slower slog and give some of these other cool things that can go on in the community mm -hmm. versus, I don't know. I just I feel like flipped. So we had the auction house, but we didn't have the, uh, the gameplay. Well, I, I know I want, good, I want good game. <laughs> no, 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 I no, don't no. want, I don't want the gameplay we have right now. No, I'm, I'm, That's I'm what talking I about, want. you would rather have the, the earlier gameplay where there is more of an interaction yes. and then having less interaction with say the yes. trade yes and also i mean the fact you know people will be like well and now if you made the argument to me an auction house right now would be really bad i actually think i might agree with you mm -hmm. because they've given us so many things to be a pseudo auction house essences masters all of these things are solving a problem that was why reinvent the wheel that's something i actually really hate and something i can't like i fucking hate wasting time if someone else has done something just be like, okay, let me learn from that, right? Why, you know, why? It's so stupid. The, the thing that would have solved a lot of problems was some sort of auction house in some form or another. Instead, they introduced a whole bunch of other things, adding way more variables that are impossible to control and impossible to balance, right? And they, these are boondoggles that will never go away, like divination cards, mm -hmm. masters. I mean, I just think these things are ter ter terrible. On the, I mean, um... I'm sorry. You know. On the auction house, I actually want to ask Green Dude yes. here because they have yes. uh, they have a, a trading system and you have like a site as well in PUD. Yeah, if you could yeah, walk yeah. us through that, it's kind of like um, uh, it's definitely not as fast as uh, PUE Trade because now PUE Trade is like you click a button, it's already copy pasted your message and you just paste it in game and then the guy knows exactly and yeah, yeah. it's like a, talking to a robot right you don't even have to you know communicate but we have just like a website where everybody makes a post you can search uh, keywords and it's written so it's not like you're actually linking an mm -hmm. item so you can't search by stats but you can search by keywords you can then pm the person and it's kind of like the um, 
if, because D2 trading was horrible. Like, yeah, yeah. What, what did you have to do? You had to create a game called like looking for P gems. <laughs> yeah, right. And then yeah. if, if someone happened to scroll down the list and see that game, maybe they join. Um, it, it was horrible. So that solved a big issue for us, but it's not as like a, an oiled machine as like POE trade now is. And right. frankly, I'm actually really happy with our trade system. I think it's perfect for D2. Mm -hmm. Like it, you still have to message people. You, you still have to get involved in the community, but you know, you don't have to do a stupid, <laughs> stupid game name and all that. It's in, uh, in POE, yeah. we have all the, uh, like the AF guy is AFK and all these. Are you handling that any differently? Like, what is the response on the how, how trading works right now? Have you gotten a lot of like feedback on it or? Yeah, it's actually mixed. Uh, people, some people love the website and some people prefer the uh, in game chat because mm. we also have like an in game global chat. And um, they were really pushing hard for me to add like a trade chat in game and I ended up giving in and doing it. Mm -hmm. But I actually just like it a lot. I think, um, like, I don't use PoE's trade channels anymore. Like, that's do people even do that? You know, like it. It's just people just spam right one message every second, and yeah. just, that kind of thing is just out of control. So I, I'm not for that kind of system. But yeah, the website's awesome, and it also says um, if someone's AFK, like on the website, they all show us offline. It like it checks to see if you're in game and tells you if. The person is in game mm -hmm. and or and or if they're on the website so uh you're still able to find people who are you know there and that that part i think is necessary for any rpg now like you need to be able to search for an item and see if the guy's online and then get his username to whisper it i think that's but we have that in poe and i, I know a lot of people want the auction house but in poe i think we're at the exact spot we need to be i think any more towards the auction house will be bad, but any further back and we're back to old POE where trading was really tough and not fun and you had to spam and trade chat. So, right. Like, I understand that the, like trusting like this guy, right, the XYZ guy to, to run a third party website and like the entire game depends on a third party website. That's not a clean solution, but I feel like we're we're in the middle of like a minefield and if we we might as well stay put because we're we're good right now and if we take a step in the wrong direction everything blows up you know yeah well but okay see this is the, this is actually the one thing people bring that up a lot um i uh, like uh, what incentive would there be for the xyz guy to blow it all up right there is no i'm not saying that you're making a bad point green dude i'm just saying a lot of people say that there's no incentive for him to do that of all the things in the history of poe and everything about the game the one person i can rely on to always be like at this point ready to service and fix and whatever would be the xyz poe.trade guy yeah yeah just to, just to clarify though i'm yeah. not saying that this is bad i, I he's a yeah he's been doing a great job all yeah. i'm saying is it's not professional for uh what I mean, GG was an indie studio. Now they're like, I mean, do, we can't call them AAA, but POE is a huge game now, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems wrong to trust a third party person for this. It's working and he's great, but don't you think that that's a little unprofessional? Well, so is who designs Eve? The space, um, you know, space sim trading, whatever game. What What studio is that? Aren't they Iceland based? I don't remember the name. Um, Eve Online, but like, don't they have a lot of third party tools in Eve Online? I don't. Maybe not something like Poe Trade. I don't know enough about it, unfortunately. But I've heard people talk about how. I mean, it's interesting to me. I I only bring it up because the little I know about it, it seems that Eve Online actually is what Poe purports to be, right? Like yeah, Chris, yeah. I would want it to be this wild, wild west where you can, you know fuck someone over hmm. i mean you can't if i yeah. go on if i go on the forums and i'm like green dude's a poopy face deleted you know like naming and shaming or some shit i, I you know I, okay I, I i just i agree with you in some sense but i don't know if that's something they want to do i think that that's okay i just think that they they have to more fully utilize it. i don't know like well we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna well i just want to say something okay. it's like I'm, I'm gonna say something that sounds like a conspiracy mm -hmm. But like, think about. I mean, I'm old enough. Maybe not everyone here is old enough to remember when you had to. You wanted to get music. You had to go to fucking Tower Records or like, 
I don't know, Sam Ash or some terrible store and CDs were 17 bucks when they really should have been sold for 10 or something. And all of that was just inefficiency created by something that was pointless, right? Then Napster came along and they were like, people are always going to pirate. And then, then eventually we got Apple iTunes where it was a dollar for a song or whatever. And like at some point it becomes cheap enough that people don't participate in the bad process. Now, right now, the way trading works in POE incentivizes people to use D2JSP. So, you know, I don't want to be that person, but the fact that they keep not fixing a clear glaring issue that incentivizes smart people to do this process over here makes me think that they're in favor of D2JSP being something that's a big part of the community because they've never done anything that hurt it. Having an auction house would 100% hurt D2JSP. Now, would it get rid of it? Of course not. Nothing would. It's like saying getting rid of banking or credit cards or something. It's always going to exist. But the point being, it would there wouldn't be as much incentive. Why do I pirate songs or pirate movies? Because some fucking stupid company doesn't make it easy for me to get it. If it costs a dollar or two dollars, it's not worth my time to deal with all the stupid bullshit. Like if, if I could just click a thing, I would never go to PoE Trade and never have to deal with anything else. Right? It's a matter of convenience. So that's the part I n I don't understand about this stuff. Like and I, it's a false. Like they're trying to. There's no sense of accomplishment, whether it takes me a minute or 10 minutes to trade for an item. I'm just pissed the whole time it takes me 10 minutes. And like right now, I was looking at some stuff because I've been saying I want to make this claw character. Every single fucking jewel has been offline for the past three days that I was thinking of buying a couple jewels for this character. I heard not a single one. And there's like 59 for sale. Mm -hmm. They're all, and, you know, from two chaos to three, three exalteds. I can't buy any of them, but I can see them. Yeah, I mean that to me. That's that's just stupid and bad design. That's bad design. I'm Are sorry. you saying then that you would want some kind of buyout instantly if the person's offline? Well, I I say I don't I don't know I don't want to commit to something because I feel like there would be a, a thousand arguments about how I'm wrong. I I just want something where there is a better sense of um, a wall being thrown up for no reason. And like the thing is, even when PoE is humming along and going really well, I like two weeks into the league, you could be trying to buy something, and if there's too many of them listed for sale, like you know, like there's an essences, right? And you know what essences are, right, Green Dude? I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so I like I wanted to buy essences to craft um, um, movement speed on jewelry for summoners, right? There's like I don't know, four hundred of them for sale. I have to literally whisper all 99 listings and I maybe get five responses of the 99 because it's a cheap item. It's not worth much. It's worth a cast or whatever. And so it's just a stupid, that's just stupid. Now I've talked about, I want to know a currency auction house. Okay. What I, I don't really get into the detail. I'm just saying it just is a bad, it's a bad impression on something that I don't know why that's still occurring. POE trade. I think it's a great service. Why should GGG have to deal with all that? If that guy makes money off of it, I think that that's fantastic, but there has to be some, there has to be some give and take somewhere and it just feels i don't know i i like i hope they don't get rid of trading because i love trading but at no, this point i'd rather they just get rid of it like nothing indicates that they would ever get rid of trading literally nothing right but i actually but at this point i would i'd be in favor of just getting rid of the whole thing you know what i mean like the mm. way it's been going where they just keep not they keep not doing i'm just saying from the perspective of if they're not like hey if they're not going to do anything for racing then just get rid of it that's what they've done I like, I think that's like you I think that's overly dramatic. I I think I don't understand how is that dramatic. There, there's been no race season for over a year. I, there's not going to be. We're, we're gonna have a race weekend that's gonna show. No, but not on the trade. It, not, not on the race stuff. On, on the on the trade part, like just it's okay. if 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 they have like this idea that they that they don't want to have an auction house, but they're not like they're fine with people trading outside in through third parties. So they introduce some tools that that works better because some people want to do that but as a core game they don't want the trade maybe to work in that in that way and maybe that's their like their philosophy maybe that's just how they want the game to run from their philosophical like standpoint and they, but they keep giving in they keep giving in on all this other stuff that people want I mean, it's just a, it's a bizarre thing. If they really wanted to work the way it used to, they should just not have allowed. Well, you, you can, allowed but, why can't I see my damage in game? Why can't I do all these other things in game? And why can't I see damage That's numbers in game? And no, because I, I don't I don't think it fits. I for me personally, I think these things should never be introduced, 
because it skewers okay. the entire perception of the game when you play it and what's important when you play it okay yeah i i, I do agree that there needs to be changes to trade but i don't know it could, to call it unprofessional to give to give players a lifeline is some is a place where well uh, Wait, did I say no, 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 no. This was to Green Dude's point. No, I did. Oh. Um, oh, okay. I definitely follow you, but at the same time, maybe they're just allowing us to have something that they never intended. Though I, I do, I do agree that it's something that whenever they do allow us, well, they have to improve it, right? They do. If if they give us tools to do something, that has to. Like that, ha it has to be. In a, like we we have to. Like whenever we see that they allow us to use tools, well, then they kind of commit to it. They can't really. At this point, they can't yeah. really not say that that they're not if they're doing that. If they're giving us tools to to work with, so. Right. Well, it's. I mean, like I said, like I said, I, in terms of trading, mm -hmm. I'm actually happy with the. I know it's not a popular opinion, but I'm just happy with where we are right now. I think we're in a perfect spot where, it's not an auction house, but it's mm -hmm. super efficient. Um, but. What makes me kind of nervous about it is that they it's just not in their control that it's out of their control mm -hmm. right now and so to actually that's actually a funny uh, i i feel like i'm going through the same stuff with pod sometimes okay with the trade website he was it was actually made it's not made by me it's made by somebody in the community he decided to make a trade website for pod it was so it was third party initially i had no control over it whatsoever and i told him like I said, look, the trade website is getting a lot of people involved and people are using it, but I need to make it official. I need to have control over it. You need to incorporate it into our website. And the reason I did that is because um, he introduced like a PM system where you could PM people on the website. Uh -huh. And then I couldn't monitor to make sure that people are not D2JSPing or something like that, you know, doing something sketchy in the in the during their conversation offsite mm -hmm. so i thought i need some control over that so that i can help for the, against cheating but obviously that's not the same situation as poe because there's no like, pm on period trade or whatever but my point is just that there came a situ there a situation arose where there was something going on and i had no control over it because it was third party and then now it's part of the website and i have some control over it mm -hmm. Right. And so now I was able to solve the issues. So one day what's going to happen is this third party trade thing is going to have an issue, which it already has happened a few times now. And, you know, it feels like it's hurting the game. And then GGG has to like PM the XYZ guy and work with him. Like it, it's like, I feel like that's not like, cause you, your argument, Niggy was, well, skill calculators and tools like that are, should be third party. They should be made by the community. Right. But I feel like trading is such a big part mm -hmm, of the game mm -hmm. that that should not be third party. But you're okay. right. I feel like a lot of tools should be third party. I just think the trade website shouldn't. Yeah, be. it's such an uh, integral part of the game. So therefore, yeah. it shouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I can it's follow much that. Different. Uh, well, I don't know. Like I again, I don't want to be that person, <laughs> but it's like they they have access to people's trade logs, right? People are not. I mean, you know what? I guess I'm promoting something, right, by talking about it, but I don't know. Or if it's 2017 at this point, if you don't know what D2JSP is and you're in this podcast, I guess you're going to find out about it. But <laughs> I like, you know, the thing is they could stop this if they really wanted to. And the reason they're not, my, you know, sort of like mm -hmm. Mel Gibson conspiracy thing is the same reason they didn't ban the 4,000 people caught cheating, even though Chris mm. said – once we ban you, because it's coming, and he said it multiple places, don't be surprised when we ban you. And and the thing was, I we shouldn't have been surprised because we got a warning, and no one got banned. And yes, I understand some people have been publicly executed a couple places, people that were the... Like, anyone with half a fucking brain would have thought that they were D2JSPing because they'd be like, this is all my money, and then the next day, Akira shows up with the chevrons and the lion eyes, and you know, okay... <laughs> But it's like they could stop all this stuff if they really wanted to. But I would I would wonder what the cross section is between the power users users on T2JSP and the people who massively support the game. I am sure that that Venn diagram is just a circle. <laughs> so, um, you know, like I don't know what to say about it. Like, it, it makes a lot of sense, just, right? You you appreciate the game, you play it a lot, and you're like, or yeah. for the people who can afford. To, to invest a lot into the are also 
I wouldn't be surprised if if that uh, that segment of players are also the ones who are just like, well, like if they're not that invested into the game in terms of keeping the game clean, but they just really love to play, well, then they don't have a problem with just buying a few things yeah. to try it out, right? Because right. if you're if you have a lot of money, well, you're probably also spending a lot of time at work, and it's not the like you're not you would rather just kind of like alleviate yourself with some sure. of these things. So I, I definitely there's probably there's probably a good correlation there somewhere. Between that, right? No, no. no I, and I mean, I, I, and I'm sure that part of my anger is about the fact that I've never taken advantage of D2JSP mm. in the way that I could, and that's only been stupid <laughs> at this point, right? I, I'm only mad at myself because I could have sold off like 15% of my race rewards and good items and currency over the course of my POE days, and I have 200,000 form gold. Wow. And it's, it wouldn't be for anything to do with POE. I would just the next time it's something I wanted to get, you know, like some shiny bullshit and whatever next game I play, <laughs> I'd be able to buy it. Well, on D2JS, I don't think you're an idiot for doing I it. Just, I think you should change your perspective. Yeah, because you should you should actually instead of feeling bad that you didn't cheat because other people did, you should feel good that you stood by your. It throws you because you have chosen integrity. That's why? something that has yeah, been, integrity. That's, why, that's, though? But that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. As we've seen, it doesn't matter. Nice guys finish last. Who cares? Like, okay, no, I'm not gonna. I don't. You, your I don't job get is to, your job is to yeah. keep your integrity, and their job is to fix it. So you should never be mad at yourself for this. Yeah, but they're not gonna. But they're not going to fix it. We've seen that. And again, I'm not disappointed because again, there's two people here, right? There's there's Moore's, the person who just plays the game and wants to rant and yell fuck you to the heavens. <laughs> but then there's the guy. I own my own business now. I work for myself. That's why I have a lot of free time. And so I understand the decisions you have to make. You know, sometimes you, you, as a business, this probably is the right call. And I've said that for a long time. Banning. You know, 4,000 people who have a donation level much higher than the average is not a smart thing for your business in the long run. So, you know, I understand all that stuff. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, I just it was, I don't know, it just was, it was stupid of me not to participate at the end of the day. It's what it's going to come down to. It's dumb. And I, I sure I've got my integrity. That and $2.50 gets me a ride on the subway. Okay. That's where I can take my integrity. <laughs> So it's just like it doesn't really fucking matter about all the stuff. And it, and it pisses me off because the things that would fix my problems, why I feel compelled to look at other avenues to see what's going on, um, is because they are not addressing some of this stuff, which I find, again, I just find so bizarre. And I do think that they've I mean, look, I think this game would have been a successful game no matter what happened. These are smart people. I can't speak enough to Chris, Carl, Rory, um, Samantha, Jess. Parishi works there now, somebody who designed Cloak of Defiance, for people who don't know that. There's some incredibly smart people there who des you know, designed a great game. Would it be where it is right now if not for some circumstances out of their control that they got very lucky? I think absolutely not. They're lucky that D3 shit the bed. They're very lucky that POE Trade came along because I think a lot of people don't know there were like five other indexers at the time. I, I happen to just pick it out because it was the least like user friendly but the most stats that's how i would have described the poe trade or when it was xyz way back in the day and that's why i liked it because i could find my perfect strength item which was actually really tough to sort of find at times um and so it's still around but that's just through pure luck every other indexer failed well some of them were bigger than poe trade for a while and then just shit out so you know maybe poe trade's too big at this point to fail and i kind of think that it is but it's i mean if it, it let's just say russia got bombed tomorrow or wherever the the guy's located he dies or you get hit by a bus and it just that's it right not he it's nothing under his control he doesn't he would do xyz till he's dead but it just ends tomorrow for a reason out of outside of anyone's control that would be a huge fucking problem for poe but they've and the reason they're not set up to deal with it is because they've just been like coasting on this other person's stuff which i think is too green to its point I don't think that it's bad that we have a third party being a part of the process, but it. I feel like if it shit out tomorrow, there would be no answer from GGG. Yeah, That's, and it happened actually. There was I yeah, don't there was know a how, four day like, period, right? Four day four period, way. yeah. Where yeah. the and Chris actually had to message the guy and see how can I help because mm, right. this was actually such a big, big, big uh, impact to Fury. And it, all I'm saying is I don't like that it's out of their control. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I love the website. I love third party tools. Right. That's all good. But one thing that I feel, it doesn't matter whether you're for or against the auction house. One thing that I never hear 
is a good solution from moving from where we are now. Because I'm for I'm all for staying where we just staying put because I think we're at the best we can be. But I've never heard someone just say a good solution. Well, that, and well, what do you so what do you think about a currency auction house? Because that's my solution. Only currency. That's it. Items and everything like that. You you have to find the price. Because I actually agree with you in terms of items over five chaos. I think the trade system is is in such an incredible spot. And sometimes there's this. It's like having a drop. You see the item that's perfect for you. You're like, holy fuck. And then the guys on the line, you're like, oh my god, I gotta talk. Send him a message and try to get him. There's like a quest to get the item, which is sort of what yeah. they want. And it's expensive, and it's a good item, and it's rare. So you're okay with making that effort. The problem is, I when I want to trade my three outs to one chaos, and there's literally 400 billion of those, and I just can't. I can't talk to the person who's ready to trade easily. That's why I think the because I would eliminate most of the dumb trades that piss people off is a currency now. Yeah. There'd be a bot, but there'd be skimming. Would there be? I guess so. I would still would prefer that problem than the problem we have right now. That, but anyway, so what do what do you think about that green dude? Because that's been my solution as a currency auction house. Well, yeah, I, I think it seems we agree on the on the other items because yeah, I think that's that's yeah. I, I love the way it is, and I love that little item hunt there. Um, I just don't know how you would execute the currency auction house, and one of the big problems is one there can be manipulation right uh Miggy and i also spoke with rise at rise about this and one concern we had was um people developing bots that can auto buy out with an auction house that's just that's gonna happen that's just gonna happen so if a if a currency drops below a certain ratio it pro it triggers that bot that bot insta buys out the item before a human can even react and now you've you know, you're like you can manipulate this the, the market so easily, um, but but at the same time, I agree with you. Poe trade with little items under a chaos. I don't even participate anymore. If something yeah. is worth a chaos or less, I a vendor or leave it in my stash. I don't care because I know Poe trade sucks for that. So we we definitely agree on on that, but I don't think we agree on the solution. Okay. I think uh, one of the things that are, is a huge problem is actually something more said earlier. Uh, in the, oh, I want to buy X Jewel right now. There is 215 available, five online and 210 offline. Why did the offline people, uh, why are they allowed to stay on the listing for so long if they do not participate? There's no, uh, there's no need for refreshing it. Uh, whenever you get all the listings, right? People can be AFK. There's so many. There's so many. There's so many places where you're you're just inconvenienced as a buyer, to where you have to identify well who's online. Okay, if they're online, are they AFK? If they're not AFK, and then you start messaging more people, and then three of them message you back like out of pure luck, and then you have to deal with that. So I, I yeah. think a lot of the problems can be alleviated by having more of um, by having more a more of a strain for the seller to to update his his listings or something like that or to where you would... and they do have the power to do hmm? they have they have the power to do that like ggg actually has control yes exactly poe tr poe trade uses their api and they could make it where when you put stuff into the um those uh what are they called the stash selling tabs mm -hmm. the or whatever tabs. yeah the, the public tabs when you put an item in there, they could make it where if you're logged off, your uh, the API stops updating or, or, or simply doesn't makes it like as if the item's not there, not yes. to sell if you're not logged in. They have the power to do that. The problem is, while I agree with you, Nigi, I think there's no way to fix that because okay. uh, people will leave their client open all night. Or well, they'll be AFK though. They'll, they'll make no, no, but they can make a little clicker mouse bot thing that. You know, you know, you've seen this in CS:GO, right? Yeah. Where the guy just turns in a circle. Okay, but so what is the point of that, though, if they're not getting the trade done anyways? So a lot of people would not even there, there was there would still be a small segment of players doing this, but you would remove like ninety percent of all these bad listings. Oh yeah, for sure. But but but, but okay, I still can't I can't get over the fact. We're talking about third party programs okay. that I want to go watch American Ninja Warrior with Mrs. Moore's. And I set up POE whisper notifier 
and then I, you know, open up the fucking push bullet app on my phone. And then I go AFK with a message being like, I can respond in about a minute to your trade mm. and go and watch that program. And then I'll be perfectly honest. Sometimes people whispering for a two cast item because I do have a couple of tabs of that, usually from the start of the league mm. when two cast is a lot and I never call it. And then they're like, I want to buy your boots of blah for two cast. I'm like, ah, fuck it. But then it, it lets me get the 15 or 20 cast trade and I pause the show, get up and trade. I don't, it just seems stupid. Yeah. And I guess that's what I should be doing. But I also, it is so upsetting to get up and come back. And then there's, I've missed all these trades and I wouldn't be so upset if it was like, well, I missed big trades and big trades. You have to be here at, at the computer for, right? That's the thing. You have to be playing POE to, to participate and get those trades, the little rinky dink bullshit things. And I mean, you guys are talking about bots manipulating it. I just, I think the scale would be too much. The scale would be too much. And then also, I also want to say, if somebody lists something for less than its value, which of course, value is a nebulous thing, but let's just say that the given ratio is three Alks to one chaos and somebody lists them at 2.5, that's their fault, right? That's not the market's fault. And in fact, that there is no harm to the average user when that thing is listed at 2.5 other than the seller. Right. Yeah, and the yeah, seller yeah. had incomplete information and they need to fix what they're doing. But that's actually not a harm to the consumer. And I think a currency auction house helps the consumer, right? Not the seller. No, no, no. So and we, okay, we agree ahead. here. We agree yeah. here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're you're missing the point. So you're okay. saying that if the guy uh, undercuts the or like lowers the price, that's his fault. Mm. We, we're not disagreeing here. What we're saying is that a robot is going to insta buy it. So what? And, so he'll put it I, three, and he'll put it at three to one. Well, every, player needs to, every player needs to install a bot to auto buy, and it's whoever's got the fastest. But, but, you said, but no, I think I actually think you misunderstand. That transaction does not matter. That was a, that was something that was there was a, a bad information, bad listing, that was not part of the established supply and demand. You know where it's equilibrium in the market. Okay, it does not matter. Like it, that's what I'm saying. You're like offended. That to, to get these steals, let's be very clear, steal, you were stealing something, right, the, from the person, you know, or whatever you want to call it. This inefficiency has given you more profit. I, that doesn't matter to me, right? Like, that's a thing. No, like, no, but that's just because we're looking at small scale where you're talking about aux to chaos. No, but that's, that's actually really big about... scale, though, because that that's – well, yeah, what's going to yeah, happen is you're going to you're going to have bots yeah, like, that are going to end up sitting there with, like, 10,000 chaos after a day. Like, literally – thousands upon yeah. thousands of chaos and that will well whether or not you think this is a problem like it or not okay. you end you end up with uh very very wealthy bots out there who will then sell that off on third-party websites for profit but this is a, but the thing is then this is already happening it's just going to happen on a larger scale whether or not this is a yeah. is something that you want i don't think that that matters I enough actually, i really well, okay. Because I would, I who, think that is something we can have, and then have the currency okay. auction house, and we accept that. Okay, but I mean, but okay. Here's the thing, though. Um, I think the problem is you're viewing the future through the lens of the now. Okay, so the thing is, yes, I guess there's a bot. I, the thing is, these margins would become so small. Okay, if there really was a, and now, like, let's just say. There was a, a part of the automatic currency auction house was when you put an ALK in the window, it automatically looks at the, you know, something last 10 sales, mm -hmm. not listings, because listings like mm, our current okay. system are vulnerable to fucking stupid bullshit. Because, again, there's no downside right now to listing things for one fusing when they're worth a mirror. Um, and so it would however it would do it, it would it would have something to look or give you an something or suggest something or whatever help you out to try to whatever to close these margins but the point being though it would become very clear what the number mm -hmm. is and again this is the this is the you know adam smith and the invisible hand of the market it would get we would get to that number very quickly sure could a bot make profits absolutely but they were talking about they'd be spending a hundred chaos to make a hundred and one tenth of a chaos i'm okay with that inefficiency mm -hmm. Right. And I, I understand, like, if you let them run 24 seven and all this stuff. But the thing is, at some point, GG can catch that uh, on enough of a scale mm -hmm. for that tenth of a chaos profit every minute or two minutes to then make enough of a difference to fuck everything over. OK, which and let's be also be very clear. 
those people, when your margins are that low, the risk you take from the market moving becomes exponential, right? You're leveraging yourself, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's the power of leverage. Right. But so uh, right now, the way things work, you it's very easy to leverage yourself because things are so disparately priced and the information is terrible. So you can gamble on um, Sork shoes, what the fuck, Skyforce, because your profit margin can be insane. Mm. But when it's reduced to this little bullshit thing, there's a lot more risk. So it's actually not in their interest to fuck around with all this stuff. And sure, they make money. I don't care. It still would benefit the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. We put instead of the cost being in these sort of vertical silos where specific things are fucked. So like right now, it's chaos and exalts. Those may, may or you know maybe it's fusings one day or something. They just get fucked because one person's targeting it or whatever. It's a it's just a sort of a a cost spread across the entire market. You're just paying, you know, a, I don't know, a 10th or a 20th of the value of the stuff you're listing goes into the, I guess, the bot thing, which still is something that GGG can deal with. Right now, they don't ever fight any of this stuff. So I, I just, I really think, yeah, I re really think that it would not be that bad. As somebody who played the World of Warcraft auction house, and I always hear these anecdotal stories from people about all, and I, I'm not trying to say anything anecdotal. I'm just saying it seemed to work fine. Mm-hmm. No, I, right. I, 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 there's, there's just a few differences though. Like, okay. um, for example, if you if the buyout for a while, I I actually didn't play last, so I don't know. But if the buyout is in game, then it's a bit harder to to bot it because uh, you actually have to run a client. Uh, you have to have a computer that that is running the game and then capable of buying out. Oh, well, that's what I'm advocating. It's an in game yeah. thing, hundred percent. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that changes not everything. Not on the I'm thinking of not on something the that website. can use the API. No, yeah, fuck yeah. that. Absolutely not. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. You have to be playing PoE. You know, maybe you have to oh, have a character that's level forty or something. Everything. Okay, yeah. Because I was under the impression I could just run like a simple lightweight uh, PHP, you know, script or whatever, and that thing would just, uh, you know, get the uh, updates thing. from the API. Just yeah, destroy right. it. Just and as soon as like. Let's say ratio for exalts to chaos. As soon as the chaos, uh, someone sells it for a certain price, automatic auto buy. And you can, I mean, people get crazy with this stuff. They can even check to see what the average selling price is and then set their bot to dynamically sort of buy uh, within a certain ratio. So that even though you're like, you go to sleep and during the eight hours, the exalts change prices, your bot will still unreal like understand what is a good deal and then insta buy right. it so that when right. you wake up you can sell it for a profit like you, people will do that kind of shit but sure now that changes no, everything no. and it has yeah. to be done in then that's a lot harder no no and, that, and that's what i'm saying the, through the api maybe it could be you know, things can be listed but the actual part you'd have to go to someone's master in their hideout and like all these there have been all these great suggestions over the years for this stuff and again i'm not saying that there won't be problems I'm full, you know, everything in life, there is a problem to everything, right? Nothing's a, nothing's a perfect good. Nothing's a perfect bad. So I, I, I you know, besides, you know, maybe Cybrix or something, but like, I, I just, uh, that's a joke. Um, he's not a perfect bad. Um, I just, you know, I think that, I just think that we're, we're in this weird spot where mm. I, 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 I really feel like something has to be done. I, I don't know. I don't think anything is going to happen. And it's very, it is very frustrating doing anything but buying a big ticket item. And I think that's the wrong impression or the wrong thing we want from people because I, I don't know. Like there's no, I don't know. I think it's, it's tied hand in hand with the people hate leveling right now. I think partially because it feels so pointless. There's almost no gear you ever get leveling that lasts with you. There's almost no, you know, you can always buy something if they're available or whatever, and it's up for so cheap because nothing's worth anything. And then because 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 trading those items is so not worth anyone's time, so they maybe they throw some up or whatever. So you just I don't know. It just it feels like there's a feedback loop happening with all this stuff because they haven't dealt with any of these problems to sort of curtail what's going on. I I don't know. Maybe again, maybe that's me. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, I don't I don't, I don't know. It just feels like when I watch POD, it seems to be running better. Now, I do think that POD has the benefit of scale, right? Because I think POE functioned a lot like Path of Diablo did when there were like 10,000 people playing. Well, POD. also when there was so only 2x and there was no, and the mapping content True. was limited to like, what, six maps, seven, maybe nine maps or something, which right, is very right. much, much into scale with POD, what that is right now. Right. 
Right. But then you end up yeah, you right. you, in, uh, you end up in the point where you stagnate, and that's why you have to have the the game has to be on the base level so much more difficult because otherwise you end up stagnating at this like this like it's it's like removing imagine imagine uh, beta uh, PUE uh, with current power levels. That's like having POD without immunities. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, one thing, actually, on the trading part is that yeah. uh, in POD, on the website, you can, you can message people, right, on that site. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I think that they could, that would be great for something like um, POXYC, for instance. You have a big ticket item. You get a notify. Because this thing, this could actually notify you, right? You could have like a ping. You could, you could pinged. So maybe it would. you could have it so that the, the, the site send you a message to some other like however you could like receive that and would ping up on your phone bing yeah someone wants to buy x and you could like specify what items you would like to trade for yeah and like in in pod it tells you also if they're online only on the website mm -hmm. so even though they're not in game maybe they're at work mm -hmm. and they're checking up the uh, trades a lot of people what they told me they do is they check who's online and then they send a pm or also in on the poe.trade mm -hmm. or well the pod trade uh you can link your discord you can link your your reddit account so um somebody can just uh, hop on discord and say hey i'm at work but i want to trade you this item in two hours and then they say okay so it's it is a little bit different and in fact i think if you did bring that to poe.trade then the XYZ guy, if he's not too busy, he could even then develop an app on the phone. Yeah. So you get a push notification on your phone. Right. I mean, there, there is there there is the third party that does all the stuff you're talking about. Like, well, I mean, p people have to whisper you in game. You have to be logged in in game to get the whisper. So if we could, if you if you could get the notification at any, no matter what's going, you don't have to be logged into PoE. I think that would be a big, could be yeah, a big yeah. thing. That's one of the things they wanted one. though, wasn't it? Like that's what they've been saying and pushing for at least yeah what they've communicated that they want asynchronous trading which isn't this asynchronous trading well Wait, no, I, uh, no, no. Have they said no, no, no. so it seems it's asynchronous trading when they say that does that imply being able to trade while you're not on the computer i think no i think they're implying i'm in the labyrinth and i can't leave uh, the labyrinth okay. someone wants to trade okay. with me no, 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 that's cross, cross instant trading mm. okay I don't think they've ever said anything like asynchronous. Oh, is that, yeah, is that yeah. only for... No, that's only for racing. I think that's only for racing. Mm. Ranger, what were you going to say? Sorry, sorry. Well, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you're making me doubt this <laughs> quote now, but I'm pretty sure that they had said that they wanted to allow um, people to be able to trade from, like, uh, let's say you log on to pathofexile.com. Yeah. As long as you're live somewhere, it doesn't have to be in-game. Yeah. Then they, that's the asynchronous trading. So, like, uh, you're playing you, uh, the game. I'm on the website. We can trade. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I still, I, to me, in my mind, I call that as, um, you know, you're just different instances. Whatever the instance is, your phone or your whatever. But I mean, uh, who, you know, I'm sure there's some mishmash of. I don't remember the quote exactly. I have no doubt that that, that you're right. Um, I just, I, I feel like we seem very far away from that i think that would that actually would go a long ways to alleviating a lot of problems something um but i don't know i mean they haven't announced anything yet i guess we'll see what's happening but my the the negative nancy part of moore's um, um malady moore's malady moore's thinks that the sickness of um resources is going towards xbox and stuff like that right now making the game better and more enjoyable things like trading and stuff would be coming in 3.1 if it was coming anywhere mm. it's not going to come in 3.0 I, I, I mean i could be wrong but it's such a it seems like such a big deal um yeah i don't know um so what do you think uh, green dude is going to happen is going to happen to pod are you going to try to schedule a pod release around 3.0 to try to avoid some of this stuff or what what is your what is your plan for it do is there much um uh, hmm. um overlap between pod and poe yeah we always try to um to schedule it around because obviously we all love to go back to play poe yeah um so it, it's getting a little bit hard because even gg themselves they don't know all the dates right now <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 
I was a little bit lucky because, um, like, I got to find out. Like, I got a little bit of insider info, so I knew what kind of what they were aiming for. But the the thing is, um, uh, POD is like flexible, right? Like, I can just say, okay, well, you know, everybody's playing POD right now. Let's just wait another month, right? Mm. I I don't. I, I, I don't uh, announce a fixed end date. I always just tell people, oh, it's about three to four months. Okay. And so that allows me to work around them because the, the, I don't know what the ratio of our population is, but it's got to be really high. It's got to be like 90% of them are from POE. Mm. Okay. So it makes like, it, we just can't, we can't play simultaneously uh, like side by side with POE. So it's, it's usually when like two months into a leak, it gets boring in POE and then people right. start like wanting that ladder reset so that's i don't know what we'll do for the beta and the expansion though we'll i, I don't know do we even know how long the beta is going to run for five to six uh, weeks through july i think yeah through july 7th or something or it was starting june 7th that's why i keep fucking yeah and then they've, starting and then they've said they want to have it five to six weeks from my understanding right five to six yeah well yeah but that could change of um, course so yeah yeah probably. Um, actually i i think um I was talking a little bit with Chris about this, actually. Um, I, f I feel like they're worried. Like, pe people are so, like, they, they jump at their throats when they, oh, my God, you know, the beta has been pushed back a week. Oh, my God, it's been pushed back another week. People are so, I don't know, like, they're, they're too aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes them scared. And in the end, I think it's unhealthy for the game. I think... People need to just have the patience and just let them do their thing because now I feel like they're under huge pressure and I think I just think it's going to hurt the product overall. And I, maybe it's just because like I we have a lot of like younger players who are mm. like impatient. I, I don't know. But for me, like the whole like beta thing was a, a huge like, I don't know, I, I kept checking out the Path of Exile subreddit and it was just, I felt like it was crazy, the reaction, like people were just complaining and what do you guys think about like people's reaction to that? So you're talking about the, this current one or the previous ones or be, be, tell me like which you mean the reaction to it being oh, the current one, right? This, this, this uh, coming beta here. Okay, so you're talking about when they surreptitiously changed the date, and then there was a huge reaction about it a little bit. Yeah, like initially they were vague, then they then the secret like stealth uh, change happened on the website, and it, everybody's reaction to that is like, I feel like it, they're putting unnecessary pressure on them, and they just need to like chill. I think you can't. I, I don't think you can say that to the community though. I think that, that the community, especially the Reddit community, will never embrace that. Um, I don't, I don't think you can, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's the, <laughs> if I'm just an old guy, but I'm, I don't feel like I'm an old guy, but uh, I don't think you can change that mentality. It's, it's the only thing that can change is kind of GGG's approach to it. I think, I think it would be, I think they would be dreaming to, to, we would be dreaming as a community to think that we could just somehow say, yo guys. Let's chill. I just don't think it's going to happen. Well, what if they had um, given us something to sort of quench the thirst? Because I was actually thinking, when is the last time we had a one-week race? I can't even I remember. Seriously, now. I've said that too. I wanted, I loved one-week races. That's how I got into PoE. And we yeah. haven't had one in fucking... I mean, I'll find out. You guys keep talking. Not, about not only has it been such a long time... So a lot of people would be really excited mm -hmm. and hyped for it. But also, uh, I mean, I don't know how everything works behind the scene, but my understanding is for them to create like an event like this, like just to um, like type, they just have to type in something and then they can generate a league or something. Yeah, well, Chris like has said, Chris has said that. Hard. Yeah, Chris yeah, has yeah. said that. He said that. I don't know how long it takes, but he's he said that it's very it's not very hard for them to just create something out of nothing. So... It doesn't even need to have prizes, I, you know. That that's one thing that I I hate is they, they always seem to think that they need to offer prizes. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of people just want like a just a race something fresh. It doesn't need to have like an Alienware laptop or something. I don't care about. So it. yeah, uh, from my perspective, I don't. 
I don't necessarily, why, why do we need to have something in between? Why can't it just be a little bit longer of a wait? You see, oh no, I'm but I'm with you there, but I just think maybe for the people who are like impatient. yeah, no, I get that, I get that. I think I think just proper communi communication and just nipping in the bud, like like okay, for the sake of the product and for the quality of the product that we all love, we're pushing back the beta. So there's no so, so we there's a reason for why it's happening, and there's just full transparency of on why it's happening and what the decision. Like what the reasoning is behind it. And you quench a lot of the questions. Like a lot of the uproar is like, oh, they tried to hide this, right? It, it seems by, right. by, the, um, by hiding it, it seems nefarious. But I think maybe it's because they're scared because they know. I know, but it, it's just. Or they, or they think they, like being too honest like that, like being brutally honest and say, listen, we're actually running late. We need to delay it. I think they're scared of what people will say. But you're right in that uh, not doing it is also make it maybe even worse, right? Yeah. And so if you introduce a one week is, is what I would think. But let's say they did that. But they all, we also know that they have a ton of events coming up f uh, through beta. And so if you put in one now, maybe, you, maybe they're afraid of oversaturating. And I think that's a fair point to make from their side. Maybe they, don't, they would rather push everything a week or two and say, well, we're just going to have a wait. And we're just going to let this okay. We're just going to die it down. They have a plan and they have all these events coming up. And if they just keep spamming out events, well, we're going to have events from now until the start. And that means three, like a total of maybe like two to three months of events. That seems quite, uh, I don't know. That seems like a lot. Like you might, you might burn out all your players before the actual launch happens. If you insist on having events every two weeks, Yeah, I yeah, actually, I'm oh, sorry. No, I just want to say it's so weird going back through the race league ladder. So let me just, I just want to say the last time there was something that was not, there was a race league maybe once, but the last event independent of a race league, independent of a league mm -hmm. was the Dark Shrine event, which seemed like it was four or five weeks. And then prior to that, there was a flashback. I, they had some other word for it. It started December 1st, ended December 31st of 2015, let me just say. Wow. So um, it's been a, I, I haven't mm. seen something with week in the title. I'm, I'm up to July 16th, 2015. So it's been that long since we've had, because so then it, to me, that means the last two week race a one week race was the one where green dude, did you get sixth? Oh yeah. Oh, with Havoc. Yeah. With Havoc. I that's lost, be the, I lost I bet the race the last, the last hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, like when, when, what, when was that? God, I don't even remember. <sighs> I'm just going by I me. Mean, it's got to be 2015, I would think, is when that happened. I just, I just miss that stuff because oh, I feel sure. like back in the day, you could just, like, back in the day, the community could just make a thread saying, "Hey, Chris, can you please just give us a one week?" And then mm. they would do it. You know, like mm -hmm. I feel like that doesn't happen anymore. It's, oh, it's so sad. I, I miss this, this. Um, I just miss the old game. I guess. Yeah. I, don't know. I would, I would hope something like that could happen. Maybe. Through the five to six weeks, for those who are not, and they could also like let's say it dies down a little bit or, or something. I don't know. I think it's something like it's, that. But it, be... they just it just feels like they're taking away all of those competitive aspects to the game, right? Like so, what's the? I mean, why did I hit a hundred on this? I've said it a couple of times, but the only reason I hit a hundred on this character because it was like the it's the last thing to be competitive mm. about, right? And it's really in in it. And the, The sad part for me is it's literally the one of the of all the competitive things in PoE, and maybe you want to define it's not PoE is not a competitive game, and I you know I don't really want to get into those arguments, but you know I understand your perspective. It's still something that other people, if you don't partake or you don't like it, that's fine. People view it as a competition. I personally don't find it compelling, but it's it seems like it's the last thing. There is no other, there is no other thing, and I don't know like one week and two weeks and one months. Those were. And races once a week. Those were, I mean, a big reason why Pee got going. I would mm -hmm. have said, I know it just so feels so strange that they focus everything on the leagues, and like everything's about the league. I, I don't know. Like it's yeah. the Almighty Holy Grail. If, if, if numbers go down in league, you know, in a league up or down, it's like the, it doesn't matter what the actual cause is to some extent. If they think it's racing, they're gonna dump racing. If they think it's one week races, it's gonna they're gonna dump that shit. And it's like, okay, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily think that that's always the truth. 
it's just people were done with the content at some point. Mm -hmm. People aren't just going to, they're, they're not going to clockwork orange, you know, eyes propped open into the computer, forced to sit there for seven days in a row. You know, they're going to play till they're done. I don't really, yeah, I don't know. It just seems so strange that they've yeah. they did ha They route. did usually have the races at the same time. So maybe they're just finding a correlation between two things where there really weren't any. Yeah. Well, I, one thing we know that they do a lot is they check their... Uh, their stats and they look at how successful each event is or each thing is. Right. And one thing I think is really a little bit unfortunate is that they'll like, let's say they run a one week race right now. They would look at the uh, stats and go, Oh, the participation was actually lower than the previous one. So we're going to stop doing that. But I think that's actually wrong because um, even if it only satisfies a small portion of your players, it doesn't hurt the other players. Right, it costs them nothing to just set up a one week race out of nowhere, right? So yeah, even if the participation is low relative to what they would like to see, they didn't lose money, other players didn't get upset, it doesn't hurt anyone. So I don't understand this logic of oh, if participation's too low, we're just gonna you know, cut something out completely. It doesn't make sense. Well, I, and I also feel like it's the type of thing where they I mean, no offense to them, but sometimes it's they like kind of put up something that's not very well done and then it's not regarded mm. well. Well, okay, they put up a poopy thing a little bit. So of course it didn't work out that great. Like some of the race some of the race leagues didn't get bad. Like, you know, let's say there was a race league during Prandis and then one during Essence, and there was all these problems raised in Prandis and they didn't dedicate any time to fix these small issues. And they used to fix them all the time. So of course people aren't gonna like the next race season because you didn't fix anything or change the stuff or you know, do some of the stuff that keeps people interested in the racing thing or the, or the signature race is not an interesting race. It's not, you know, I don't, I don't mean I do, but I, I think they do suffer from the, like the shark syndrome, right? They've got to swim forward all, all the time or they're going to die. And so at least that's our perception. And I think that's where we get to these. I do think they're very, I don't know if Darwinian is the word. They're very cut and dry. Like you, like you're mm. saying, you dude, all this was one week did not have as much participation. Cause that's it. Cut it. It's done. Every, you know, fuck it. We're never going back to that because I mean, there was de maybe that two week race had low participation. Um, cause I mean, I don't think we've had one since yeah. then. Well, I think also two week um, races have lower participation than one week because, uh, I would think so. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just think I, just, I personally as well think that way that, um, just two weeks is not good, but one week is really good. Yeah. Or actually one time they did a weekend race. Wasn't it uh 48 hours or something? Yes. Um, and it was, uh, there was no masters, but it was, there was some kind of modifier. I can't remember. Oh yeah. Exiles everywhere. Mm, we can yeah, yeah. no masters. God, that was fun. It was fun for many reasons. Obviously the exiles everywhere was crazy, but actually one of the things I loved the most about that race was the fact that there was no masters. So I didn't have to level them. I could just, if I wanted gear, I could just go out, kill a lot of exiles. And then that was it. You know, one of the problems right. with the, one of those leagues is, um, is that they don't allow you to merge afterwards in those. Yes. This, this completely yeah, kills that. it for a lot of players. That's actually, that's, Dougie and I have talked about it a bunch. That's my biggest thing. I don't understand why. Who gives a shit that you've skipped first one or two acts of normal? I don't even know. Like you're, I guess the, they don't like it for what because you didn't have to do the tough content. I mean, content is, is optional. You know, it's not like invasion. I don't know. Uh oh, oh it's just they're making a lot of noise i actually think it's uh i think it's weird that actually the because yeah ggg did say when the characters don't merge the participation is much lower and i'm sure that they they see the lower participation and then they say okay we're going to stop doing leagues that don't merge or uh, races yeah. that don't merge and so i actually think that's sad and okay. yeah i i think it's unfortunate i in fact i I'm actually surprised. I was surprised by the statistic because I, I didn't think people actually cared if it merged or not. Um, well, I just I think the, the I think it's one of these things where they the problem is I understand it was an old system, but we used to get currency mm -hmm. and you got to keep the character. Okay. And then on top of that, they've made it so that you don't even get your rewards anymore. It's six weeks to like and look at my cool stuff. They still have never introduced a cross league mtx so i can i mean 
I don't understand. I have a shield that had to be designed by somebody, cost them three thousand dollars, right, to design it, has in game art. There's twenty four of them that exist. Like, what was the point of that? Maybe it was cheaper back then, but I mean like my unique still doesn't have three D art. Two of all three years and change later. So I'm just like, I don't even, I don't even, I, some things I can't, I just, I can't, I don't know. I can see why it lost the money because they, they didn't, they like did step that, you know, A, B and C all needs to be done. They did A and B and they're like, well, we're not making any money when C is the thing that would make them money. That's what I, it's just so, it's so bizarre to me. I don't know. Like imagine if they gave you, um, th so you get to keep your character after leagues and then they ran a character slot sale during whatever i mean people will then buy it you know what i mean like this is this they, they and i guess chris has talked about he doesn't want to be like a selling out shill or something i don't know i feel like you people have you, they've earned our trust with this stuff as long as they're open and they're like hey listen because of the way we do things now you're gonna have extra characters floating around so we want to we want to give the option to but now you could delete it you don't need to it's a free-to-play game you can do whatever you want but if you want to keep the character and you know experiment with it later in the league which would be a lot of fun you can buy a slot now and all this other stuff i just i feel like there's ways for them to justify what they're doing that i think people who maybe wouldn't necessarily participate would participate you know like okay so you're playing the one week race and you die in it if you're hardcore you go to the standard league that's already running right now and you get to have go have just keep playing the character and have fun with it or whatever you know they just they took away all these things and they i don't know they make it so not compelling to participate mm -hmm. so of course the, the all these leagues are going to blow i don't know it's just a strange i don't really get it i don't really i i I don't, I don't know and there's there is a clamor there is a clamoring for this stuff and they just seem to be like well we're just gonna kind of ignore it i don't know what you guys think about that it just it does feel like they are are like we know that there would be people who'd want to do this but we're gonna sort of make it fail and so then prove to you why you're wrong about thinking it's fun that's the impression i get sometimes from them um, I think it's, I mean, I I, 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 it's necessarily their, their intent, but it's it's definitely what they they end up doing. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, anyway, hmm. I am excited for I'm excited for the beta. I hope that uh, we get some cool oh, yeah. things and some new skills. Um, where's my frost orb? First, you know, <laughs> that's just as a, as a side note. That's always so funny to me. They copy so much stuff from other games, and yet things that were clearly very popular in some other game they like refuse to just take it just give me frost orb i don't want frost bolt or i have to fire vortex and then click a thing and then such and such to or, or use three dragons helm plus ball lightning to get something that's like a frost orb no i just want something like that and it's just so strange to me where they they seem to draw the line sometimes randomly and then they defend like the stamina thing we I can't believe we still have that in PoE. How is how is it possible we still have what? the vestiges of that system? In in what way? What, stamina. What, the movement speed penalty is the stamina thing. Oh, that is the end result of the stamina discussions. Chris wanted stamina, as I recall, mm -hmm. is what it was said, and then he got convinced not to have it. So then they put the movement speed penalty based on the quality of armor you're wearing. Well, D two has like. Well, okay, so they have so they have both things. So he wanted the whole yeah. thing, and they got rid of the stamina part. Mm. And it's like yeah. I don't know. It just feels like I'm I in that respect. That's a D two system. We don't have to keep that. It serves no purpose at this point. Oh, D two, they have. Isn't that cap in D two as well on on movement speed? Weight or based on your strength? Or something? No, no, no. Just isn't there an actual hard cap? Or isn't isn't there? Or can you run as fast as you want in D two? Yeah, I'm not aware of a hard cap. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Never mind then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, um, so <laughs> green dude, we went very long <laughs> and I just want to say thank you very much for, uh, being here, participating. It was really great to have some nice outside developer insight into, uh, into POE, maybe, maybe calm some of us down like me or freaking out about <laughs> why can't they just make trading? And you're like, well, it's not that easy more because you know they uh, there's problems and you're not thinking about it so yeah so thank you very much for coming yeah thanks for having me um do you want to tell people where they can find out about path of diablo if they're interested in you know getting that uh, d2 itch going again for anyone who doesn't know or whatever anything 
Yeah, I just realized maybe we didn't mention that, but yeah. <laughs> Path, of Diablo is, uh, Path of Diablo is a Diablo 2 mod, and the sole purpose of the mod is just to um, I- introduce all the quality of life that D2 doesn't have, like shift-clicking stuff into the stash and loot filters, and trying to revitalize or make possible builds that didn't exist before because some of the skills were just so awful, so they kind of got reworked or buffed in some way. So that's the kind of the purpose, and it's been I've been working on it for over two years now. Nice. That's the Diablo.com. Um, okay. And, and just for anyone out there, if you're nervous about anything, I want to say the best part about when I was trying to make it work, uh, again, it, everything worked. Again, it's something to do with my eyes in Diablo. Maybe I'm just an old man. But in terms of installing, installing, there's a program to you know, simulate the graphics environment from old computers because things were different back then. Um, setting up your client. I don't know. Anything you think you need to do, there is a fact. Green Dude has a YouTube. It's li- like a three-minute video. Tells you everything you need to do. It's really, really, really well done. If, in fact, if there was something that PoE could take from Path of Diablo right now, I actually would point to that as the number one thing that I have no idea how we don't have a YouTube from Bex describing like how to get a character to level five or something in PoE, like installing the game and all this stuff. It just seems like it's, it makes things so easy to get going. Um, and it's like really, really well done on Green Dude's part. I wanted to, I've been meaning to say that to you, Green Dude. Oh, like it was so easy to deal with everything, right? I don't know if you've gotten feedback mm-hmm. on that from other people, but the fact is great. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. And then, well, Nugget, you could you could play us out. Yeah. Well, on a little uh, positive note here, Morse, since you didn't yeah. you didn't think that your integrity mattered, I can tell you okay. that if you didn't have integrity, I would not be doing this podcast with you. Well, so there I, is value I appreciate in it. That. I look. I just. I don't actually. I'm glad that I haven't. Right? That's good. Um, I. I not. I just feel like. It's a contract, right? Sure. Much in the same way that George R. R. Martin has a contract with his readers to release the fucking book already. Um, <laughs> there's a contract. <laughs> if you are in the general chat of a game and it's 2012, and you say, "I would really appreciate if people didn't do that," because even you know we know about it, we think it's going to ruin the game. So this is Chris talking to Moore's and other people mm. in the POE beta, you know, long time ago. And like, I, I took that on board, you know, like I thought that was like a super important thing. And so I really, I mean, that's actually most of the reason why I get so mad because I'm like, I feel like I entered into not a contract, but like a, like a social bond Mm. to, to make the game great. I mean, I didn't feel any compunctions about cheating in D3. Like I said, I, half of the money that came to make, let me buy the diamond pack was selling bracers in Diablo (laughs) 3 on D2 JSP. And I've been open about that. So, you know, I, I. I'm just annoyed it takes so long, but again, I'm not the, you know, they have unique challenges, but so yeah, I appreciate that. And I, I love you too. I think that's where we're going. So So with that and a big thank you to green dude, that's going to be a podcast number 14. Yeah. Soon to be uploaded on time this week. I guarantee it. That's good. Well, yeah. Peace out everyone. Yeah. See ya.